and uh, hopefully it turns out. Can everyone hear me okay? Can someone let me know that they can hear me? All right, with that, I'm gonna get started. Uh, we use Zoho as a CRM here. Uh, and again, I can't uh, show you the CRM that we're using because it has confidential client data in it, but we find it tolerable. Um, it's much easier than using a PSA for prospecting. So I'm a big fan of using a tool that was built for calling for calling and letting the PSA handle ticketing and uh, account management. So we use an independent CRM, um, again, normally with a click to dial, but today I'm using my phone and my notes for dialing are over here. I don't know if this, this camera does move a little bit, but I usually set up a large platform so I can just see things quickly because sometimes I call for Doberman, sometimes I call for three or four other managed service providers. So with everybody wanting something a little bit different, it's good to have your script right in front of you. And I've been doing this for 20 years and I still like a script and a guideline and I still like the callback number listed somewhere really, really simple. So I can see if I'm leaving a voicemail, here's a company I'm calling from, here's the purpose that I'm calling for, here are the things that I'm gonna qualify for because every client has a different qualification requirement, but most of them have a minimum user account of 20, phone number, uh, some reference clients, so I can talk about clients that Doberman is already supporting effectively. And then I have a system that I use over and over and over again. It's three steps. Uh, we call it ask here. A, acknowledge the objection. Um, S, state a fact about the business. And K, keep the prospect engaged or keep asking questions. So there is also a, I uploaded a bingo card if you want to get bored listening to me dial. The problem with cold calling live is that you may only talk to two people in three hours and it can get very boring to do. And certainly it can get very boring to listen to. So one of the things that we try to train out of our callers and that I'm still susceptible from time to time using our filler words. So I gave you a filler word bingo card. If you catch me, if you get a straight line of, uh, me using filler words on this conversation, I will give you a prize. So hold on to your bingo cards and uh, let's see how well I do today. So the way that we structure our calling days here, we always start with follow-up calls first. So I'm gonna go through all of my outstanding follow-up calls for this program, and then I'm gonna go on to net new calling. So let's get started. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hello, is Liz in today, please? It's Carrie calling from Dilburn. Liz? Thank you. I was calling to follow up from a conversation that we had with her at the beginning of the year uh, about providing a quote for IT support. Is Liz the appropriate person to talk to? No, no, we were looking to provide a quote to you. Uh, we understand you're currently working with NetSmart. Liz mentioned that she would like a, a call back closer to the middle of the year to decide whether or not you were going to renew. My name is Carrie, C-A-R-R-I-E. I'm with Doberman Technologies in Lansing, Michigan. Five one seven nine seven eight eight three two four. Great. Thank you so much for your help. Have a good afternoon. All right. Bye bye. So this was a prospect that we spoke to in uh, January of this year. They're working with a competitor to Doberman. Um, they were fine with everything last time we spoke to them, and they requested that we give them a call to follow up later in the year to see if uh, they might consider changing. So 
uh, wasn't able to reach her today. And then we take a note so that we uh, have better um, insight into how long it takes us to get from the very first dial to a closed deal and also how many dials it takes us to get to an appointment. Um, let's see. I don't take really long notes. I usually just update really quickly. Our callers are held accountable to a standard of less than two minutes in between dials unless they've scheduled an appointment because the appointment uh, workflow can take a little bit longer than that. The way that Zoho is set up, it pops all of your follow-ups into one area, which is nice. It prioritizes them by um, importance. So we always notate whether or not it's a high important follow-up or whether it's an introductory follow-up. So an introductory follow-up would be uh, somebody that we haven't spoken to yet and we're just constantly calling them, trying to get that initial conversation. An actual follow-up is a conversation where somebody has requested a follow-up after uh, an activity of some kind. So we sent them an email and they asked for a follow-up afterwards. So this is a property management company. Hi, Sam. Is Pam in today? Sure. It's Carrie calling from Doberman Technologies. Is this Sam? Okay. Is Trisha in today? Yes. Great. I'll just leave the number and uh, if they'd like to connect, that would be great. Uh, my number is 517-978-8324. It's Carrie from Doberman Technologies in Lansing, Michigan. And we're calling to provide a quote for IT support. I'm following up from an email that we sent uh, earlier in the year. Okay. Sorry, could you say her name was Jessica? Yeah. What's Jessica's title, please? Are you making a um, significant change to your IT infrastructure right now? Oh, that would be great. Thank you very much. Okay. Now, I believe that somebody had let us know that they were changing um, contacts, but they weren't sure who the contact was last time. So this is really helpful. Um, I'll send her a quick note, or maybe I can just re-forward the email that we sent in previously and just uh, introduce us to her. Um, I'm available today until about 4 p.m., and she can reach me at that number if she'd like to have a chat.
Oh yeah, no, we'd love to throw our hat in the ring. We appreciate. Uh, I pre- like, we've spoken a couple times now. I appreciate your time. Yeah, absolutely. We All right, thank you. Bye bye. So they've added somebody to their projects team, which reminded me that somebody sent me an email back about that, and I'd forgotten. But they provided the email address and the title of the new uh, person responsible for special projects. It sounds like she was previously the controller of the business. She left the business, he has come back to the business, and she's moving into a different role. Uh, this is what we would describe as somebody who is an accidental IT uh, executive. So somebody who works in finance is also responsible for IT. It looks like they work with a break fix provider from time to time, but primarily there is somebody who is not an IT person responsible for IT. Sometimes that can be really simple, and sometimes it can be a very long nightmare. And I'm just scheduling a follow-up call on this one. We've spoken just for uh, information purposes. We've had one, two, three, four, five, six. We've interacted with this, this lead eight times at this point. We've emailed three times. We have four different contacts within this organization. So we first started calling them in December of 2020, and now it is obviously uh, May of 2021. So now it can take months to get dug in with a, a lead. And when people are asking me why it takes so long for cold calling to produce results, it's because of things like this. And I'm gonna set a follow up to call her again tomorrow. Now, obviously with Doberman, um, for those of you that don't know, I live with uh, the owner of Doberman. <laughs> so I have the opportunity here to do significantly more with his account than I would with anyone else's. I can send emails from his email address, for example. I can schedule lunch meetings with him. I can do all kinds of stuff that normally we wouldn't be able to do for clients. We do have real-time access to people's calendars, but uh, we don't usually have the, the freedom or flexibility to decide, you know, who they're going to take to lunch or who they might meet with, even though they're not quite at a buy ready position in their sales cycle. And in this case, um, you know, we've been pursuing this lead for a while. We know it's an opportunity that we want. We've already qualified it. They've got 25 computers and four servers. They're a construction company. It's a really good deal. And, you know, we'd obviously invest some money in trying to win this deal you know, versus one that where we didn't know anything about it and they hadn't stayed so engaged. So the woman that I just spoke with, the executive assistant, has been super pleasant and positive, understands our IT environment a little bit, but not enough to, um, you know, not enough to be considered a champion or an influencer, but definitely somebody who could block us from the opportunity if we tried to go around her. Hey, Sarah, it's Carrie Simpson calling from Doberman Technologies. I was calling to follow up from uh, an email we sent you recently about providing a quote for IT support. Are you the right person to speak with there? Uh, okay. When would be the best time to try her back? Okay. Uh, is there a better time than others to reach her? Sure. Um, it's Carrie from Doberman. My number is 517-978-4000. Thank you so much. All right, have a good day. Bye bye. Bye bye. 
one of the things that's kind of important in any um, CRM system is making sure that you clean out and update your tasks. And instead of pushing them forward, I can end up with, you know, 50 tasks if I'm not paying attention to that. That's something that we incentivize our team to do. So they are they're judged on how often they're kicking the can down the road instead of actually making the calls on the day that the prospect requested a callback. Um, one of the nice things about working with um, agents who aren't necessarily in the managed services space or who may be in their first professional job is that they don't cherry pick through things. So as a, a business owner, you probably have a list of companies in your city where you look at them and you think, oh, they're not going to be interested or, oh, that's probably not going to work out for us or whatever. Our callers don't know the difference between Deloitte as an accounting firm and, you know, Joe's accounting as an accounting firm. So they just make the calls on the list as they're identified and they don't go through the list and prejudge who is and is not going to take the call. And then if they're closing all of their tasks on time, they, uh, they're eligible for variable compensation around that metric. And we measure on a bunch of different metrics, um, including how quickly can you get back on the phone again afterwards. So obviously chit chatting in between calls dumps my numbers down. Um, but again, I can get away with it because nobody's paying me to make these calls. So we're cool. So this company is a chiropractor. Mallory. Hi, Mallory. It's Carrie calling from Doberman Technologies. It came in today. Sure. Thank you very much. Hi, Kim. It's Carrie Simpson calling from Doberman Technologies in Lansing. Uh, I was calling to have a conversation with you about providing a quote for IT support. We spoke with Darcy back in March, and she mentioned that you've got uh, 18 computers and a server. She wasn't sure how you were currently receiving support, but we'd love to be able to throw our hat in the ring. My phone number is 517-978-8324, and our website address is doberman.net. Hope to speak with you soon. Have a great day. Bye-bye. Some people don't believe in leaving voicemails. Um, I always leave voicemails because it doesn't really take that much longer. Um, our callers have the option of voicemail drops, which sometimes can go really well. Uh, and that's a recorded email where it's just like, hey, it's Carrie calling from Doberman, blah, 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 blah. Thank you very much. Here's the number, here's the uh, website. Um, but if there's any anomalies in the conversation or in the conversation with the gatekeeper before you get to the decision maker's voicemail, the email can get a bit janky, so I don't usually use them, but I do like the control of consistent, well-recorded voicemails when my callers are making calls. So I usually record all of them because it's not like they're going to know the voice of the person that's calling them anyway. Mark is the IT guy. So I don't even know what kind of company this is. The name of the company is the name of the business owner. They have an IT guy. They have 55 employees. And we haven't yet had a conversation with the decision maker or the IT person. And we are on our, we've only been trying to reach them since the middle of March. One, two, three, four. We're five calls into this. So this will be the sixth one. And we've sent two emails. 
Our emails are also all templated. We don't, uh, a great caller isn't necessarily a great speller. And we always want our customers represented well, so we don't allow them to compose emails. It also takes a long time. And if you have any call reluctance at all in your blood or body, right? If the idea of cold calling makes you anxious and you're not into it, um, you'll find a lot of reasons to not bother, including writing long flowery emails that no one reads. Hello, it's Carrie calling from Doberman Technologies. Is Mark in today? Pardon? Good hold music. Hey Mark, it's Carrie Simpson calling from Doberman Technologies in Lansing. And I was calling to find out if we might be able to help you out a little bit there with uh, some special projects this year. My number is 517-978-8324. Our website is doberman.net. Uh, I was speaking with Rochelle. She mentioned you have 55 computers there and uh, only one IT person wondered if it might make sense for you to have a conversation. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye. So I always try to reference somebody else that I've spoken to or something else that has happened. I don't really like to talk to the IT department. I prefer not to. Uh, but in this case, you know, we've already tried to call this client, I think we said six or seven times now, and the owner of the business um, isn't available. So if we want to have a conversation at all, we're going to have to start with the IT guy. Um, I don't really have any IT education other than, you know, a handful, enough, enough to be dangerous from our vendor campaign. So I understand what most of the vendors that we've supported do because we've had to train callers on how to pitch their stuff. But when I'm talking to an IT person, I always feel the conversation leans more technical and less business, which isn't a space that I'm comfortable in. So I really don't like having those conversations, but you're not gonna be perfect on the phone all the time. So who is this? Oh, okay. So this one stands out in my mind for some reason. Um, so this is a weird one. I think that we scheduled an appointment with them for Doberman several months ago and they lost the bid and then re-engaged when we invited them to attend a webinar. Back on the, okay. So since I'm not the exclusive caller for any of these campaigns, it's a little bit uh, awkward for me because I don't remember talking to anyone. I don't have any real notes that I've created to reference. I'm usually cleaning up behind a caller. Like maybe if we've lost headcount or something, I have to go in and make sure somebody's getting the dials that they're paying for. So I'm still on the phone a couple of times a week, whether I want to be or not. I still do a lot of call training and I find calling soothing. Hi there, is Stan in, please?
Sure, thank you. Mm -hmm. 802-9865. Is he located in the same office? Uh, very good. Is Stan still the right person to speak to about providing a quote for IT support? Wonderful. Thank you so much for your help. Have a good afternoon. Bye-bye. All right, so he doesn't have an extension, or maybe his extension isn't working. They provided me with another one, so we'll try him there. Hey, Stan, it's Carrie calling from Doberman Technologies. I hope you're having a great day. I'm calling to follow up from the cybersecurity webinar that you registered for in April. My phone number is 517-978-8324. Please let me know if we can be helpful to you. Have a great day. Bye-bye. So we usually rotate through a couple of different webinar topics, uh, cybersecurity, cloud, um, budgeting for changing IT providers, and there's a couple of other ones. So we usually do one a month and then just kind of rotate through the topics. Mm -hmm. The health clinic. Hi, Rose. It's Carrie Simpson calling from Doberman Technologies. I was calling to follow up from the cybersecurity webinar that you registered for. Uh, it was in the middle of April. Uh, that's no problem. Uh, we provide IT support for healthcare. We're a managed IT support provider located in Lansing. Uh, we support companies with between 20 and 100 computers. Uh, we work with uh, several healthcare providers in the Lansing area, including Oh, it was, it already took place, uh, but you weren't there. <laughs> so I was calling to follow up to see if there was something you wanted to learn. Okay. Yeah. So early September, are you planning on changing providers? Okay. Okay. Uh, what is your email address, please? Oh, I should have it actually. Our cadre at. Yeah, we have that. Um, how many computers are you looking for support for? Okay. Servers as well. And what EHR system are you using there? 
Okay. I will send you some information and um, we will talk to you in September. I look forward to learning more about you. Have a great afternoon. Bye-bye. I gotta turn the heat off in here. I'm dying. So that's a 15 seat women's health care center uh, about 45 minutes away from our office. She had registered for uh, a couple of webinars, but hasn't attended one. Uh, specifically one about cybersecurity. So whenever somebody registers for a webinar, I like to call them, ask them what they wanted to learn, and then identify you know, whether or not they were looking for a reason, right? Are they just uh, looking to learn stuff or are they actually looking to uh, replace their current provider? So in this case, they are looking for a new provider. They're gonna start accepting bids in September. So she said that she's building a file currently and she's going to evaluate different providers. I don't really like going into multi-bid situations, uh, especially with a lower number of computers. We aren't the cheapest provider in the market here. So the um, going into a multi-bid situation, uh, it's great if you're the last person to put in a bid. So I will drag my feet a little bit on this one and then hopefully get in there, schedule an hour long conversation do uh, you know an overview of what they're looking for, what their budget is like. And you know, if their budget's appropriate, we would move forward with the bid. But if their budget isn't appropriate, then we wouldn't. She's in a rush to get off the phone. And I didn't want to ask her about budget because she was already flustered. She didn't remember registering for the webinar. And um, she was like, how did you get my name? Uh, so things like that can be a little off-putting to people. So asking computers and servers is important. Uh, we want to make sure that we don't spend another 15 dials chasing down somebody that only has five computers. But in this case, um, there are certain verticals that Doberman will take a lower seat count for, and healthcare is one of them because they have so many healthcare uh, clients already that the smaller ones are actually kind of simple once you get them set up correctly. So if this was a random like manufacturing company, for example, we probably wouldn't put in a bid for a 15 seat company that was out of the vertical sweet spot. Uh, so here we look at um, construction and healthcare primarily. And so they'll take lower counts for construction and healthcare, uh, but not for other areas. So in this case, I take a, uh, I send this right over to the owner of the business in and let him know that he needs to put together um, an email. So if it's just a simple request, like, hey, send me something, and it's obvious that they don't really care, they're just trying to get me off the phone, I send a templated email with a button. But in this case, um, since they've let us know that they are looking, we will send a more custom email, we'll send more information. Uh, Doberman is in the middle of a rebrand right now, so they've got uh, new information and you know new folders and presentation materials, so he'll wanna use those, and I don't have access to them. They haven't been built in our system. Well, that's a good one. So the follow up for this will be uh, an email. Or confirming that the client sent the email. That'll be due tomorrow. And then I'm going to call them back at the end of August. So I'll schedule that follow-up now. 
So the more things that you can automate while you're dialing, the easier life gets. Yeah, task. But now we know there's an opportunity in the pipeline. We know how much 15 seats is worth to the company. Uh, we know how much 15 and one. So 15 seats, one server is worth to the business. So we can put that into our sales pipeline for probably a close in uh, late August or early September. Win some, lose some, but odds are out of every, you know, out of every three appointments that I schedule for Doberman, he closes at least one. So he's fairly reliable that way. Not all of our clients are. Um, he's got a pretty consistent process that he follows for sales meetings. They're very structured. And he's pretty open with talking about it. So if you're struggling to close your deals, you know, you can definitely reach out to Ian. I'm sure he would uh, have a little bit of time for that. August. So I want to call her kind of mid August for that September bid. I want to get Ian in front of them before they make a choice. And if uh, if they respond to the email that we send over, I'll try and push for that a lot earlier. It's pretty rare that you can um, disrupt a bid process. So if they're hell bent on taking it to a multi bid, they're going to do it. There's no real need to start, you know, to try and convince them otherwise. But if we can have a decent conversation with them beforehand, we can position ourselves as the, you know, the premier provider and they'd be dumb to go with anybody else. Uh, but then I'm going to drag my feet on submitting the bid until the very end. And we won't submit the bid unless they agree to meet face to face and talk about it. Or I mean, face to as face to face as we can get right now. So that's always a consideration. The, uh, the odds on closing the deal go up significantly when you present the proposal. And if you're not doing that currently, it's something you should consider doing because just sending somebody like, you can send me over a file. Maybe I read it. Maybe I don't. Maybe I read it and I'm like, well, oh, shit, that's way more than I expected. But you haven't explained to me why it costs that much or why it costs more than maybe the bids that I'm looking at. Uh, sometimes we'll push to have all of like to, to review the other bids to see, you know, where we could come in. Um, and sometimes it's apples to apples and sometimes it's like apples to onions and, you know, we'll, you don't want to pitch against somebody who doesn't see value in security, for example. So if you bundle security in and your competitors aren't doing that and your initial proposal is you know, 150 per seat and people that aren't including security are selling it at 100 per seat, your bid's obviously going to come in a lot higher, but you're also including a lot more. So it's good to be able to walk them kind of step by step through you know, what are they getting for the money that they're spending. All right, so this is a, I don't know what this is. Let's find out. So we're still in our follow-ups. As you can see, it's like we're 40 minutes into calling. We've had one conversation with one decision maker. Good conversation. Probably will get an opportunity to bid there. So that's pretty good unless we don't talk to anybody for the next two hours, in which case it was a real grind of a day, which is why most people abandon cold calling. It's boring. And with only, you know, one appointment for every you know, 100 or 200 calls that you're making, it can get frustrating if you're not working towards something on each call. So I always try and collect something new. I want to learn something new on each call. So if we don't know something about the lead, I want to learn about the company and see if I can add to our data repository. It's a whole lot easier to market to people when you have email addresses and you understand what their pain points are. It's really good to know who people in the market are working with. So for example, if there is a company in the market that wins most of the legal work here, I want to know why. And then I want to know how we can beat them. Right. So we usually ask why they like something. 
Now, why did they choose that company, et cetera? And then by learning what they like about their current provider, you can usually get them to talk about what they don't like without throwing any dirt on them. And then once you find out that, you know, ABC company uh, always drops the ball during the onboard process, you can start just twisting the knife in a little bit and asking them about that. Like, oh, you're working with ABC Co. Okay, great. I'm glad you got a provider that you're happy with. How was your onboarding experience? Right? Boom. We know that if they're screwing up onboards for two people, they're screwing up onboards for all of their clients. And depending on where they are in their growth cycle. So if you know about your competitors and, you know, if you know that they just landed their first big whale client, you know that the rest of their client base is up for grabs because all of their energy is going to be spent on that. And they're not going to be paying attention to those little 20 seat opportunities when they've just landed their first 75 seat opportunity. Personally, I'd rather have a whole ton of 15 to 20s than that one big whale client that's going to take way too much of my attention and way too much of, uh... sorry. <laughs> Hi, it's Carrie calling from Doberman Technologies. I'm looking for Lawrence, please. Uh, no, it's fine. Is Joel in today? Thank you. Hey, Joel, it's Carrie Simpson calling from Doberman in Lansing. How are you? Good. I was calling to find out if we could provide a quote for IT support for you this year. Carrie, C A R R I E. Uh, no, I'll give you uh, my office number. This is my cell phone. It's 517-978-8324. Who should I be talking to? Sorry, what was the name of the company? Oh, like a full back office solution. How have you been? How like how's the IT support been? How many computers do you have there? So is everybody using their own, uh, everyone's using their own computer or are you provided with one by the business? Okay. What about security? Has there been any breaches? Has there been any challenges around? Like, is anyone concerned about this? It sounds like it, there's kind of a disparate, disparate types of computers and disparate locations. Is that accurate? No, I understand. That's uh, you, you've been very helpful. I will uh, reach out to Marcy. Is there a day that's better than others to reach her? <laughs> Do you have her email address by any chance? Yeah, no, good advice. 
L-A-N-C-O-R. Oh, sorry, it's L-A-N-C-O-R. C-O-U-R at Friedland. Thank you for your help. I will try to find her. Um, if I call back into the main number, will I be able to find her that way? Okay, thank you for your help. I appreciate it. Have a good afternoon. So I still don't know what kind of company that is, but some, they need scales, large ones. They have an office location and across from the office, they have enormous scales. And uh, it sounds like there's probably a embedded relationship there because they're outsourcing their IT and their uh, accounting and some other back office functions to a provider that I've never heard of, but um, you know, I don't have a lot to, to go on there since I've, I've never, never, never competed. That's not the word I'm looking for. Since I have never come up against them previously, I've never had any reason to research them and I didn't understand the name of it either. So, read land. <laughs> But I'm going to call back in and see if I can talk to her. So I'm going to call them back right now. Mm -hmm. Hi, it's Carrie from Doberman again. Joel said that I should speak with Marcy. Is she in today? She's on the other line. Do you want her voice That would be great. Thank you for your help. Hi, Marcy. It's Carrie Simpson calling from Doberman Technologies. I was just speaking with Joel, and he let me know that you'd be the appropriate person to talk to to provide a quote for IT support. My number is 517-978-8324. Love the opportunity to learn a little bit more about your environment there and find out if we might be able to be of assistance this year. Hope you're having a great day. I'll look forward to talking to you soon. Bye-bye. <laughs> All right, so I have her email address. I can send her a note. I'm gonna, so today I'll send the emails that I would normally send while I was dialing after I'm done here because I don't think anybody wants to wait while I compose this one. And since it's not yet qualified, like we don't know how many computers there are, we don't know what their environment's like. Um, this isn't one that I would send over to Ian to handle because there's not enough information for him to tailor any kind of uh, custom email for them. So the generic one would work just fine. But I like to, uh, especially in situations like this, where it's kind of sounds like they've got some weird, weird anomaly stuff. So a generic email isn't going to be as useful. I can visit their website, learn a little bit more about them, kind of best guess what life might be like there, and then send something that might be more compelling. And again, that's not something that our callers would do, but I'm a little more embedded with this IT company than we are with our, with our other clients. So, you know, I kind of have carte blanche to handle the account the way that I want to. And I close the open activity. With something like this where I don't have any information yet, I'll just call and ask for Marcy again tomorrow. Um, and then if we're using the automated system, if I schedule, if I disposition it as a follow-up call, the system will automatically schedule it for four business days from now. Mm -hmm. 
This would still be considered an introductory call because it's not qualified. We know that they're already outsourcing, but we don't really know much more than that. It says that they have 40 employees here. Let's see. Interesting. Okay, so the website address that we had listed is wrong. So now I know what they are. They are a scrap recycler. And I know exactly where this is because we used to walk past it every day. It's near the baseball field. Now they also provide document shredding. Which is interesting. Website's a pretty basic, like Squarespace website, nothing fancy. And they do a, a volunteer document destruction day, which I think is really cool. They donate the proceeds to a not for profit. So I'll have a bit of a conversation around this. I'm gonna ask them questions about this um, and just try to be you know, a little more detailed to make the interaction a little more relevant to them. Is everybody having a good time? So this is a dental office and we've tried to reach this contact. Looks like this will be our 12th attempt since identifying the decision maker. Um, only the last note transferred from when we moved the CRM from our system into Doberman's own system. So I have information on the decision maker and the calls that we've made to her, but not how many interactions we required before that, just to get the name of the appropriate person to talk to. So even though we never get to speak to this person, we always call them anyway. It's the client's job to disqualify, not ours. So we usually have notes telling you like what button you need to push to get to the right person so that we don't have to like figure it out every time. I'm Marissa, it's Carrie calling from Doberman. I'm looking for Nancy, is she in today? Yep, yeah, it's Carrie and my phone number is 517. 978-8324. I was calling to provide a quote for IT support. Is Nancy the right person to talk to? Um, yes, I will have to send it along and can you tell me how many computers you have there? We've tried to reach Nancy a few times. I just want to make sure that it's a good investment in both of our times. Okay, thank you very much. I will look forward to chatting with her again soon. Take care. Bye-bye. No so these guys only have 13 computers. So um, 
It's interesting that somebody else had called a bunch of times without qualifying that. Now, for a dentist's office, uh, we're not going to pursue a 13 computer lead simply because the, um, in the words of the business owner, Dentists are notoriously cheap. They're hard to get on the phone. Um, even if we get Nancy on the phone and she engages with us, she still has to sell the idea of changing providers or you know choosing a provider at all to the dentist who owns the practice, and that can be a huge uh, you know uphill battle. So we'll check in with this lead you know, once or twice a year, but we're not going to aggressively pursue a thirteen computer dental practice. So now I can disposition this as this qualified by size. And we don't have to consider, we don't have to keep chasing this one because we're, we're well into the weeds on it now. And had somebody else, like obviously Marissa uh, was freely giving that information. Like she didn't have any problems answering the question. So if somebody had asked her that 17 calls ago, we wouldn't have wasted 17 calls. And 17 calls is about the equivalent now, if anybody's counting along here, 17 calls is about two hours worth of work. So if you think about the amount of time that you have available to cold call, you probably don't have two hours to try and chase down one opportunity that wasn't even worth chasing. So an initial first point of qualification conversation, anybody can tell you how many computers they have at the business. You don't need to talk to the CEO of a business to ask them how many computers they have. So if you can think about how to eliminate the next 50 calls of your life, uh, asking questions to anybody who will answer the phone is the best way to do that. So they're disqualified by size. And the way that our system is set up is once you've disqualified a lead by size, it'll just drop out of the call view. So that one's done. I find disqualifying stuff satisfying for that exact reason. Who do we have on the call today? Who's here? Adam, how are you doing? Nate, nice to see you again. There's some people on the call that I recognize from LinkedIn, but who I don't know personally. Jason, nice to see you. I know John, John Ard, nice to see you as well. Thanks for coming today. All right, so we've been at this an hour now. We'll take a just a quick like break. So if anybody has a quick question, I'm happy to answer it right now. I could use a break just from dialing. I usually get up every hour or so and just like not mess up my back. Um, sometimes I do push-ups. Not today. It's hot in here. So Adam, are, is our, are our styles similar or completely different? Anybody see or I guess hear anything that um, they found off-putting or that they think is interesting? I think once you get a rhythm going, it's just like you fall into that. And unfortunately, that can go well or it can go badly, right? If you've got a ton of bad habits and you're just used to, you know, trucking along and like you can get into kind of a zone where like I could probably read a book and cold call at the same time. I've been doing it so long and I use the same line of questioning on every call I make. I've got a, a pattern and a rhythm that I follow. So I could legitimately just be like browsing and talking to my friends on Facebook while I'm dialing. Um, but I don't find that being distracted, um, works really well. Like when you can hone in on the person that is, uh, talking to you as opposed to just kind of like idly, uh, how many computers do you have? Oh, who are you working with right now? Like you can do that, but it gets super, super boring if you don't try to entertain yourself in some way. So sometimes like, okay, today I'm gonna, you know, I challenge myself to have, you know, five conversations with a decision maker 
or I'm going to find out uh, a new piece of information on every dial or whatever. It can be very, um, like it can get super, super repetitive. Oh, okay. So let's move on to, we'll do some cold, cold calls. These were all follow-ups, but remember some of these follow-ups are people that we've never spoken to before. So that last call, for example, we've never had a conversation with the decision maker. We know who the decision maker is because somebody told us, but you know, we, we haven't really talked to them, but I can go right into the, um, right into the cold, never called. Let's see. So we sort somebody asked who we what we use for uh, CRM. Uh, we use Zoho. Uh, Zoho is a pretty good product if only one person is using it, and if you're going to take the qual like the take the opportunities once they're about to close and move them into something else. I wouldn't manage my entire business on Zoho. I'm not a big fan. Uh, I find that they they develop a lot of new products rapidly uh, and they don't put a lot of attention back on their previous products. So their support isn't fantastic, uh, but for, you know, $60 or $65 a seat, it's a pretty uh, cost effective system to use. And since my mother was the director of operations for my business for eight years, you know, she's the one that chose Zoho. She's the one that learned how to use it. She's the one that does all the uploading, downloading. She still works for me on contract. So she still manages the administration of Zoho. And she will actually set up custom installs of Zoho for our clients who want to do their calling in-house. So if you're looking to set up a, a database for prospecting and you don't want to figure out all the ins and outs of how you're going to start. I'm like, now I'm cold. Um, you know, she's more than happy to do that. Her rates are pretty reasonable. I mean, I get a sweetheart rate because, you know, I'm her daughter, but we found it easy to set up, pretty easy to use. The one challenge I have with it is the AI for the system is horrific. How to find the decision maker. Okay. So somebody asked how they find, like, let's see, let's do some cold, like some just plain old cold calls, and I'll show you how I try to identify who the decision maker is. All right, so unqualified, untouched. So one of the things that they set up here for the previous caller that worked with Doberman uh, was a just a, like a checkbox, right? So you finish on the call, and if it's qualified, you click a checkbox, and if it's not qualified, you click the other checkbox, and from there, the leads that are qualified will pop into their own call view and the leads that are disqualified drop out of call views. But we also keep all of the data in the database all the time so that we're not constantly uploading new data. And uh, Andrew, uh, I'm not sure how you, how you got on the list either. So <laughs> uh, you know, we, have a, we have a database of probably 40,000 IT service providers in North America. Uh, we do outbound cold calling for you know, a half dozen uh, channel vendors at any given time. So we've uh, we've maintained ownership of that data over the course of the last seven years. So if you got a call from Datto or Sophos or uh, OpenDNS or Cisco Umbrella, um, Reach Secure Now, like there's there's a million different places we could have found your phone number if you went to IT Nation or DattoCon or Autotask or any of the conferences that we attended. We always get the uh, registration list, so lots of ways that data gets in. All right, so sign assign. So I'm gonna go into the gatekeeper block dispositions. So these, a gatekeeper block for us is a company or um, a disposition where somebody, whether it's the receptionist or another person, has said that they are, um, they're not going to, they're not interested. But in our, um, the way we set up our calling, the only person that can indicate that they aren't interested in something would be the decision maker. So if they, if the, you know, the person that answers the phone is saying we're not interested or we don't, you know, we don't take sales calls or whatever. That's gatekeeper block. So this company, it looks like we called 
in November 2020, and they said they already had an IT company and ended the call. And then we called them again, 20 computers and 12 users. So let's see if we can uh, do better than the last guy. So when I call in, I like to pretend I don't know anything about the company, even though I do. Hi, Kathy. It's Carrie Simpson calling from Doberman Technologies. And I was calling to ask who I should speak to to provide a quote for IT support. Oh, how long have you been working with them? So far, you've been pleased. All right. Thank you, Kathy. Have a great day. All right. Bye bye. So what I'd like to do is find out who they're working with, right? So once they like, that's the same thing that happened on the last call and we haven't called them for a while. So we'll follow up with this one in six months again. So my personal belief is that you're never about, you're only about 90 days away from hating your IT company. You know, if my experience <laughs> is any indication, granted I'm a very difficult client, but the, uh, with some like major requirements, right? Like when I can't, like when our systems go down much like, you know, uh, well, I don't know how I think you can still like look at people's teeth if you can't use your computers. Right. But if our call center goes down, like if the if, if it goes down, we can't do anything. So if we but the problem, of course, is that it's all line of business applications and Internet. So there's not a lot that a managed IT provider can do for us other than provide the security that we need to protect our data. And that's hugely important for us. Right. We're calling for companies where you know, we have to sign some pretty restrictive data privacy contracts. So we, you know, we have to guarantee them that their data is not going to get out of our system and into someone else's, for example. Um, and we also have to protect ourselves from internal and external uh, malicious threats, right? Like we fire people and walk them off the floor. People can do a lot of shit in 15 minutes if you're not able to completely shut them down. So that's a gatekeeper block. but we know that they're a qualified prospect because they're already buying managed services from someone else. So I don't want to take them out of the database. I'll just do a, uh, we call it a health check every six months to see if they're still happy with the person that they're working with. Yeah, so I'll give them back a call in October. Woo, more dentists. All right, so Again, it looks like we reached out to this lead for the first time in November of 2020. The gatekeeper said that they weren't interested. And there hasn't been a follow up since then. So I'm just going to go in like I have no, I don't know, I've never called them before. I don't know. Good afternoon, it's Carrie Simpson calling from Doberman Technologies. I'm looking for Cindy, please. Okay. No problem. Is Cindy the right person to talk to to provide a quote for IT support? Uh, are you working with a third party or do you have somebody in house? And how? Oh, one of your patients? kind of an embedded provider then. Yeah. I hope they have like six kids that need braces. Well, sometimes they do. Um, how long have you been working with them? Do you know? Uh, well, oh, so you've had multiple providers or are you working with a, a consultant or?
Okay. 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 It sounds like you're, you have everything you need right now. Okay. Uh, I'll follow up with you in six months. See if you're still happy and uh, yeah, it'll be nice to talk to you again. Thanks very much for your time. All right. Bye-bye. So with only 11 computers, um, I'm again, not going to pursue this one, but I wanted to see if we could, uh, since they shut us down each time we've called, I like to call and see if I can do any different. So they're using Patterson, which is a pretty common dental practice management software. Um, and they worked with a company. It sounds like that, um, you know, they, they hired somebody who used to work for Patterson. So to me, it sounds like somebody left Patterson and started a dental specific practice. How are you? Good. You say hi to everybody. Hey, everybody. Just getting uh, shut down by dentists. Shut down by dentists? Yep. That's what will happen. Yep. Dentists are really, really tough to break into. Yeah, that just, that's just two in a row, two dentists in a row. Their gatekeepers are pretty solid. And again, part of the challenge is it's the doctor that makes the choice whether or not we get the uh, practice manager on the phone. So subject, check in. With that 90 day touch practice, um, you can, you know, you're, you wanna really catch them either right before they have some, and it's not usually a catastrophic thing, right? Like it's not very often that you call someone and they got breached yesterday and their the hair's on fire. It's usually just kind of death by a thousand paper cuts. And, you know, the, the, the IT company pissed somebody off and you got uh, you got the opportunity to speak with someone uh, where you normally wouldn't because they're just pissed off at something that happened. Right. They, they had an SLA that they didn't meet or you know something, something simple, usually. And they're like they got their panties all in a bunch about it. And sometimes it can be really good because you can start like sticking the knife in, but it's not going to be really fast because most reasonable people aren't going to change IT providers that they have a contract with over like a little incident. And if they are that type of company, it's probably not a client you want anyway. So if they're like, yeah, I hate those guys they are such assholes. And then I want to dig a little bit more. I'm like, all right, well, how long have you been working with them? Oh, we've been with them a year. I'm great. Well, what did you do before that? Oh, we had another IT company and they were assholes too. Right. Like, so eventually they have to, you have to assume that like they're the assholes. <laughs> and if that's not the kind of uh, client you want, then, you know, I, uh, I don't like to set appointments for people that are venting, right? Like I'll, I'll hear them out and hear how shitty their IT person is and how shitty their last IT person was. But I, what I don't want is that conversation about Doberman a year from now, right? If they haven't been happy for the, the last four people they worked with, couldn't make them happy. Odds are we can't either. Probably nobody can. Okay, so this is a real estate firm. Where'd they go? Everything's open right now. No, we already got that one. So this was blocked last time we called as well. But we know how many computers they have, so. Why do we know that? Hmm. All right, so this should have been dispositioned. I'm not going to call this one after all because this should have been dispositioned as a decision maker not interested. We've already spoken with the appropriate person. They've already indicated that they have less computers than our. Um, so I'm just going to disqualify this one and move on.
Calling is actually far more interesting when you're talking to people in between dials. All right, so. We spoke with these guys in November and we got shut down saying they were happy with the provider that they had. So I assume that's what's gonna happen again, but uh, we can work on some objection handling and see if we can make it go. Hi, it's Carrie calling from Doberman Technologies. I was calling to find out who I should speak to to provide a quote for IT support. Oh, uh, wonderful. Can you tell me how many computers you have there? Six. Six? All right, most of the time companies that work with us see ROI around the 20 computer mark. Are you currently in the market for support? No, we are not. All right. Well, I think we're good then. Okay, thank you for your time. Have a great day. Bye-bye. All right, so again, these guys are not qualified. They have six computers, but um, interesting that I think what happened here, because it looks like the, the gatekeeper's name is Brenda and a man answered the phone this time. So one thing I like everyone to keep in mind is you never know who's gonna pick up the phone when you dial, but they did provide the uh, decision maker's name. Uh, her name is Debbie, she's the controller, but with six computers, this isn't something that we wanna pursue. So we're gonna disposition this, disqualified by size, move on with our lives. All right, what's this? Ooh, what did, it's, is tax season over yet? I'm not calling a tax company today. 10, 10. I'm going to sort by employees. Ooh, 127. Let's see what these guys do. Okay, so this has never been called before. I like to take a quick look at the website for a call that's like if we've never called them for to make sure what make sure that they're one not a competitor. Um, Let's see. Hmm. Well, they have a PR page that announces that they've completed the purchase of their US and European operations. So I'm going to say that this one's a little too big for a managed opportunity. It might be a good co-managed opportunity, uh, in which case we would market and move on from there. Yeah, so I'm going to skip over that one. It's not that we don't like co-managed. It's just a much longer process. So I usually kick those over to uh, a more ABM approach and understand what we want to approach them with. So if I'm going for after a very large opportunity, I will normally focus on one particular thing that we can do to assist them like a security assessment, for example, if they want an independent set of eyes to come in and do an overview of what their security posture looks like and then present them with a bunch of things that they can then give to their IT department or to their IT company to resolve. Uh, that's a really nice land and expand way to get into a larger account like that. Please. So going back into gatekeeper block leads so we can see if we can work our way through here. Let's try this. Variety. Mike Vernon. All right. Well, I've tried to reach this guy a couple times, but 
Mm -hmm. My notes in here because I know that I can. I'm not calling this one because I think that I called him and forgot to put notes in there. I can recognize the name and that's pretty rare. So I want to do a little more research. I'll pull the, uh, so in a situation like this, or it looks like a good opportunity, but there's clearly something missing from it. I'll pull the three CX call records and look for the, uh, the phone number to see if I did in fact call them or if I'm just imagining it, but that takes a little while and I don't like to do that during calling time. And this is a health practice. So January, Courtney. Um, so this is 50 computers and three servers. They have an IT provider and we've gotten shut down at the gatekeeper each time we've called. So I'm just call in again. Depending on how long it's been since the last call, I pretend we've never spoken to them before, or I might go in mentioning the previous conversations or who I spoke with. Hmm. All right, so I can, got the opportunity to, I'm going to press five for billing. Yes, it's Carrie calling from Doberman. Is Stacy in today? I'm not sure. Is Stacy the right person to chat with about providing a quote for IT support? Wonderful. What's the best day to normally reach her? Is there a time where she's more available than others? Okay. Thank you very much. I appreciate your time. Have a good afternoon. Bye-bye. So the best time to reach her is at nine in the morning. So I'll schedule a call back for them. <laughs> I've called these guys a lot, <laughs> but it's a really like it's a good opportunity, right? It's a uh, 50, 50 desktops, three servers. Uh, Medical is really their bread and butter here, so. Well, we'll pursue those ones until we get a restraining order. So. The biggest issue with using Zoho on an enormous monitor is it only shows like a teeny tiny bit of it. Whereas when you use it on your laptop, you can see a significant amount more. So I end up scrolling around looking for stuff that was, uh, it's way easier to find on the smaller one, but also I end up doing this through the whole webinar if I do that. So we're an hour and a half in and we still only had uh, you know, one conversation that's going anywhere, which is pretty typical.
So these guys have 40 computers and three servers. They have a managed, they have a managed IT provider already. Everything's going well as of December of 2020. It says the company is cutting him a break and charging him for 10 computers instead of the 40 they have. <laughs> so, oh, it says that we can follow up in six months. So I'm gonna do that. Uh, but I mean, obviously if the company that they're working with dropped their pricing from um, 40 seats to 10, like there's no way that we're going to bid on a 40 seat opportunity that, uh, you know, is priced like a 10 seat opportunity, but who knows, maybe, uh, maybe business has gotten better since then. So in this case, I would reference that they spoke to somebody previously, you know, he's probably taken a ton of phone calls between this, uh, you know, between the time that he gave that information to the previous caller and now, Oh, I was, I was like, oh, no, they just went out of business. <laughs> but I called the wrong number. Oops, nope, not that. Person I want isn't in the directory, so. Oh, hi, Dale. I'm sorry. I'm looking for Tim Allen. Sorry? Ah, uh, is there, um, sorry, is, can you transfer me to him or do I need to go back to zero? Sure, that'd be helpful. Oh, I apologize. I understand that if it's not too inconvenient, that would be really helpful. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I appreciate your time. All right. You too. Bye-bye. So that person had the same last name as the contact that I wanted, which is why I called them. Nice enough guy, but it gave me his direct dial, which is cool. Hey, Tim, it's Carrie Simpson calling from Doberman Technologies. I'm calling to follow up from a conversation you had with Matt last year about IT support. How are things going? <laughs> How are things? It sounded like I was just reading uh, Matt's notes. Uh, he's no longer with the business, and I've taken over uh, where he left off. Looks like you had uh, 
a bit of a bump during COVID, but it looks like your IT guys were actually decent about it. Not so good now, or <laughs> you don't sound enthused. <laughs> okay. And are you back up and functional again now? Okay. Okay. And it uh, looks like 40 computers and three servers. Is that still accurate? Okay. So is it time for a new bid now? Uh, I, we experienced a little of that ourselves this year. Uh, that's got to be really frustrating. I think that we were very fortunate to be considered essential during the pandemic. Well, when would be a good time for me to reach back out again? Okay. I will do that. Oh, I understand completely. And, uh, you know, if it's not broken right now, why, why mess with it? All right. Thanks for your time, Tim. I hope you have a good day. All right. Bye-bye. So it looks like this company provides like, um, bus rentals for, um, for, touristy type things, right? Like you rent a bus and you go from point A to point B from your hotel to, I don't know, some social function. So any of you have ever been to uh, IT Nation when they rent all those buses and they take us over to the Hard Rock or wherever they have the party, that's what this company does. They're a, a bus transportation service and they haven't been uh, doing very much since COVID hit because there's not a lot of tourism going on. So it doesn't sound like they're delighted with their IT provider, but it also sounds like their IT provider is giving them such a nice deal that it would be silly to try to displace them right now. So if they're open to having a, another call uh, in a year, then I'll just call them back in a year, you know, for a 40 computer three server opportunity. It's pretty cool. I, uh, I think if it were me, I'd be hard pressed to screw over the IT company that cut me a fabulous break during, uh, you know, a very stressful time in my business, but you know, we're, we're going to keep calling anyway. <laughs> So if those guys drop the ball, uh, and again, it sounds like they, they haven't been great, but they haven't been expensive either. So that follow-up's completed and we'll schedule a check-in. Oh, and I've got, uh, I've got Tim's uh, email address here. So I'm gonna send them. Just gonna send over the standard. I'm going to flag this for a follow-up. Come on, Zoho. So normally with our callers, like if I wasn't working for, you know, my partner's MSP, I wouldn't schedule this as a follow-up. Like we don't do follow-ups a year out. That's not really a follow-up. We would disqualify this based on timeline and we would move on uh, unless it was a fabulous opportunity, in which case we would hand it off to the client and say like, hey, like at handoff, when we disengage with a, a customer that's paying us for cold calling, we'll schedule a, uh, like we'll give them an offboarding document that identifies everything that they need to do once we've disengaged. So in the same way that you'd hand off um, you know, a client's environment to the new provider, if they're taking it in-house, we want to make sure that we're clearly outlining where all the opportunities in their pipeline are. So this one's a year out. We schedule the annual check-in a year from now. And that way, when we hand it off to the MSP, they have a list of all of the follow-ups that need to be made in May of 2023. And they have a pipeline that's already built. So we already know how many computers and servers they have. And then we'll know based on what the IT company charges per seat, what that opportunity looks like. So if you're charging $100 per seat and they've got 40 seats and three servers, and I don't know what you charge for a server, uh, but let's just go on the computers. It's easier. 
now at $100 a user, that's a you know, four or $5,000 monthly recurring contract. They're already not that satisfied with their provider. So I'd give this one a higher ranking potentially than somebody who's like, oh yeah, no, our guys are great. We'd never leave them. So last time we spoke to them, he was like, they've been really good to us. They gave us a great deal. This time they're like, well, it's going okay. Right. So they haven't revealed who they're working with. And that would have been my next question. If I uh, could have kept him engaged a little bit longer, I would have wanted to find out who they were working with so I could figure out how we could potentially win that business with my understanding of the Michigan market. So I'd be able to say like, oh, yeah, well, what do you think about the acquisition? Right. Like there's a couple of big players in our market that all just merged and guaranteed something's going to get missed. So at this point, part of my calling hit list includes all of the customers for that particular uh, MSP. And we know who they are because we've been calling for Doberman for three years now. So we know who is working with who and we know when the contracts are coming up. So if we know that they're working with this particular competitor, I can sort all of the leads in the CRM by that particular company name. And I start hammering away at them like, hey, how are things going? What's going on there? What did you think of the merger? What's new? Like, I don't want to go in and be a complete asshole like, hey, stuff's going to fall apart. Right? Like that's not really my job, uh, but I do want to remind them that there are cheerful, friendly IT people elsewhere that would be happy to take their 30 seat business if, you know, that big behemoth managed service provider that just joined with two other service providers, there's about to be some service delivery gaps there, right? Everybody's going to merge and they're going to decide what PSA you're using. Everyone's going to get migrated. There's going to be things that get missed. And, uh, you know, we want to be there when those things get missed. And that's the, the whole thing about cold calling is it really comes down to timing. If you're not tracking all of your follow up activity. You're never going to be in the right place at the right time. So cold calling without data integrity is just like banging your head against the wall over and over again. Right. If you don't know that you already like I'm looking at this company here, this is a surgery center. They have 21 desktops. They're in a managed contract. And let's see. So they were with this company. Oh, it's melted. Gross. Um, well, they're definitely open to a follow up. And they changed IT providers a couple of times. They changed and they went back to their previous IT provider. They made the switch. It'll be harder to displace these guys because they've already left them one time and went crawling back to them. <laughs> no. Sorry, Darwin. All right. Hello, is Cheryl and today it's Carrie calling from Doberman. Thank you. Thank you very much. Hi, Cheryl. It's Carrie Simpson calling from Doberman Technologies. And I was calling to follow up from a conversation that you had with Matt last year about potentially providing a quote for IT support. I understand uh, that you're currently working with another managed services provider and we'd love to uh, provide a competitive quote. 
I'd love to hear a little bit more about how we could throw our hat in the ring. My phone number is 517-978-8324. And our website is doberman.net. We've been supporting healthcare in the Michigan area since 2005, including Lansing Urgent Care. And we've been working with them for almost 10 years now, and we've helped them open five new clinics in that time. Happy to tell you a little bit more about it, and I look forward to chatting with you. Have a great day. So a voicemail like that, I want to say like, hey, we've already indicated, like, we've already know about you. We've already talked to you. We already know you're working with someone else. Here's why I think we're better. Here's why I think we should have a conversation. I want to reference one of our clients, you know, a client that's happy and will reference for us and a client usually that has an interesting story. So, I mean, that particular company, Doberman's been working with them since they were like a 10 seat company. And now they are significantly larger with that, larger than that with multiple urgent care locations, plus some uh, cosmetic um, spas. It's one of those clients where, you know, they've been with them forever. And, you know, I had my Botox done there last week. Good people, good reference. I don't always leave long, elaborate messages, but I mean, obviously this is a deal that we want. We know that they're already paying for a managed contract. We know that they have an appropriate number of computers to be a good fit for us. So we're gonna go a little more aggressively into this. Mark that is that task is closed. And schedule a follow-up. The follow-ups I try like the way that Zoho will schedule a follow-up is it'll automatically default to whatever time you made the first call at. So no, I write this note at 2.41 on Thursday. And then if I schedule a call back for next Thursday, it will schedule it for the exact same time, which I don't want to do. I want to, if I called them at Thursday at two and I don't find them in the office, I don't want to call them next Thursday at two because for all I know, they have every Thursday off. So I want to mix it up. I'm going to call them back on a different day at a different time. All right, here's a law firm on the smaller side, 12 computers, 12, one server. We know the name of their provider. Mm -hmm. So these guys just signed with a new provider in January. Oh, that's January, 2019. So that takes us to two years out. Last time we, so since then we've talked to them one, two, three, four, five, six, 10 times, but we haven't had a conversation again since then. And we didn't speak with the decision maker at that time. But that's how we found out who they were working with. So I don't know this company, I've uh, never heard of them before. So I have no, I have no point of reference for what their service is like or what they charge. Hi, Wendy. It's Carrie calling from Doberman. I'm looking for Savannah. Thank you. I appreciate it. So, Randy, this is a law firm now.
Oh, thank you so much. Hi, Savannah. It's Carrie Simpson calling from Doberman Technologies. I was calling, I was going to follow up from a conversation we had with uh, Wendy a couple of years back. You had just signed an agreement with uh, another managed services provider, uh, and you mentioned it would be okay for us to check in with you every once in a while. So, I'm calling to check in and see how things are going, see if we might be able to provide a competitive quote this year. Okay. Yeah, no problem. Um, I just want to confirm a little bit of information so I can send you some accurate info about us. When we spoke last time, you had 12 computers and one server. Is that still accurate? And do you, um, are you able or willing to share your current spend? Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Is uh, and what um, what unique software systems are you using there? What is there a for your practice? Is there a custom made solution or? Okay. 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 I just started using the Kanban board in Trello. How do you like it? Mm hmm. And what are you using Fusionsoft for? How, like, how much marketing uh, can do law firms do? Mm -hmm. I understand that. <laughs> um, yeah, so is your primary role marketing and then you uh, are you the primary contact for the IT firm as well or do you do you do some of the IT support yourself? Okay. Mm -hmm. Amongst other roles, how many hats are you wearing currently? <laughs> So how many hours would you say that you spend focused on the IT environment as opposed to other things? Okay. Okay. And has there been any significant downtime in the last couple of years? Yeah, 
How old is the server? How long did you go down for? What does, um, like from a financial perspective, what does that look like for the firm when it happens? Mm -hmm. Okay. So the remote workers, how do they access the information that they need every day? Or is there like, what did your IT company do to set them up? Okay. And was that in place before you started working with this firm or did they set that up for you? How about the, the security posture? How, how secure is the firm now? Okay. Uh, I'm wondering if it would make sense at this point for you to have a conversation with our CEO. Uh, just it sounds like you've got a couple of uh, emergent issues. Uh, I understand you're not looking to change in immediately. And I think that that's you know, ideal. We are, we're never looking to support companies where their house is on fire. We, we like a smooth transition, and I think that's better for everybody. So normally, you know, the, the transition period can be, you know, depending on your level of uh, emergency, which it doesn't sound like you're currently in crisis, but it sounds like there are some concerns. So, um, Mm Mm -hmm. Well, we would love to be able to review the your, your current contract and your current invoices with you. I know that our contract has a clause that says if we are in a, a breach of service, for example, and if we're not uh, abiding by the service level agreements that uh, we agree to with our clients, they need to bring it to our attention. And then we have a 30 day period where we can remediate that problem. And if we can't remediate it, then you're you're welcome to leave your contract. I feel like as a law firm, you guys probably have that under control. <laughs> you probably you know, don't need our help there, but uh, we'd uh, absolutely. I think it might be interesting to have a competitive quote available at the time if you want to go back and speak to your provider and decide what your next steps are going to be. Uh, it may not be bad to have a second set of eyes come in, take a look at everything. I don't make you a list of the things that I would bring to their attention. And from there, um, you can take that list and you know either you can say, hey, I need you to remediate all of this or we want one of our agreement. Um, and obviously, there's some risk involved in, on our part. I mean, you could choose us, you could choose another firm, but I feel like if we have the opportunity to come in and help you remediate some of those problems, we probably have a much better chance of winning your business later. So I definitely don't consider it a waste of our time. Okay. Okay.
Yeah, that's no problem at all. I'm going to have Ian send you uh, an email with uh, some information about Doberman and overview our services. And I will follow up with you at that time. If you have questions in the meantime, and feel free to reach out to Ian directly. And um, you know, hopefully we can do some business together in the future. Thank you very much for uh, spending some time with me today. All right. Thanks, Savannah. Bye-bye. Ah, oh, so close. So close. So close. Ah. And Randy, yes, having a, well, it depends on the, on the person, right? Like it depends on what industry you're calling into. So I used to work for a company called Reynolds and Reynolds uh, and we did dealership man, they did dealership management software. I built their outbound um, programs for them and then trained their sales development reps. So when I was calling into car dealerships where uh, most of the, the owners were male, yeah, being a woman doesn't hurt. Um, but if you're calling into health clinics, uh, dentist office, anywhere where there's usually a female administrator or a female practice manager or a female office manager, um, I don't think being a woman helps when you're talking to other women at all. I think sometimes uh, it's unfortunate, but people gravitate more to someone of the opposite sex. I think I can get away with a lot more because I'm female. Like I can be a little more playful on the phone. I can make jokes or whatever. My, you know, we have a little more sing songy voices. So we, we do sound a little more genteel perhaps. Um, if I could staff a call center with nothing but women with Australian accents, I would absolutely do that. Uh, but one, it's not legal and two, it's not really possible but your, your voice does make a difference, but I think it's less what sex you are and more you now how friendly are you? How, like, are you smiling while you're talking to people? I try to make a, an effort all the time to uh, make sure that I'm smiling while I'm talking because that comes through really well. I know, Adam, it was so close, so close. Um, this is a good opportunity though. So we've been pursuing this for a couple of years now. Um, it's a reasonable, reasonable opportunity. Uh, they were very happy with their provider last time we spoke. Now they are not very happy with their provider. Their service level uh, has dropped. Uh, their server went down for a full day. They have multiple remote locations. Sounds like they've got a VPN that they use. Um, they feel like their security posture is good. So they are currently getting everybody together to review their contract to see what their out clause looks like. So that's a great sign. You now they're looking for, they're looking to leave, but they want to find out what their obligations are and whether or not they even can leave and they want to get all of the issues. So the issues that she's sharing with me are only the issues of one person at that law firm. Uh, it's not uh, company wide. So they want to gather up everybody's concerns and then you know, it sounds like they'll give us the opportunity to quote at that time, but you know, we're still 30 days away from that. So, you know, close only counts in horseshoes and hand grenades and my clients get bitchy when I don't get meetings for them, right? Like they want the meeting. They don't want me calling them back and saying, oh, hey, you know, we got a great opportunity in the pipeline, oh, but not for a few more months, right? So best case scenario for me, I could, I could push that and try and get the meeting, but I also run the risk at that point of coming off as being, you know, off putting to that. Like she's told me what their decision-making process is. They're all going to get together. They're going to review the agreement. The executive leadership team is going to decide if they're even going to take quotes. Um, uh, but I did get her to say that I could call her back in 30 days from her original 60. So I've shortened the timeline. I'll have Ian send a detailed, um, overview of Doberman and I'll have him send some references over and I'll have him send over the like the new corporate documentation and uh, then I'll have him remember to check in every couple of weeks until the point where they get to the, the they're going to ask for uh, another quote so good news and that brings us to the top of the hour and uh, now I'm going to take a little break hooray so if you got questions now is the time But knowing that these guys are dropping the ball, the next thing I'm gonna do, since I've never heard of this provider before, I'm gonna go research them. I'm gonna see if they list any customers on their website. I'm immediately gonna try and pick those off. I'm gonna sort uh, by competitors and see if there's a couple more 
providers, uh, or sorry, a couple of more companies in the database that are also using that provider and uh, just start piling on, right? If they're having trouble supporting this customer, they're probably having trouble supporting all of their customers. And it's, I feel like it's kind of predatory to go after businesses where you now you can tell just by the way that this woman described what was going on, that they're just having a shitty go with things. We've all had shitty goes at things, but you know, all's fair in love and prospecting. So take care of your clients or I'm going to find them. This one goes over. Uh, so somebody said, hey, I'm a one man band. What are your thoughts on doing my own cold calling? I think that as the business owner, you've got a uh, an opportunity to call peer to peer. Uh, and somebody asked earlier about, hey, for companies that are happy with their existing MSPs, what are your thoughts on asking for referrals to other companies? Well, I mean, if it were me and I just said like, hey, I love my IT company. And you're like, OK, well, does anyone in your network need IT support? I'd be like, I just told you I love my IT company. Uh, but as a, a, for a peer to peer strategy or a CEO to CEO strategy, if you're doing your own calling, you have the opportunity to ask questions at the end of your call. Uh, I haven't done that yet because I haven't had a decision maker conversation yet. But the, the conversation I would have, Jason, as your as the owner of the business is like you have the conversation. They say, you know what, we're good with what we have. Like first find out what you would have to do differently to replace their current provider. So what do they like about them? What would have to change for them to consider choosing a new provider? Like, what do you need to be that their current provider isn't? And then from there, I'd be like, great, okay, well, sounds like you're all set there. Um, you know, out of curiosity, what would be helpful for your business right now? You don't need IT support, I've got a pretty big network. What are you looking for? Right. So if they tell you that they're trying to hire an HR director, for example, and you have uh, the, what I do next after that, I'm like, OK, well, you know what? I know a few recruiters. Would you like me to make an introduction? And oh, yeah, no, that'd be great. Thanks so much. Like, yeah, great. So now you're like everybody's buddy. Right. Like you're going to be the guy that uh, helps them find their new HR director. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to LinkedIn and I'm going to find some recruiters in my area and I'm going to call all of them and I'm going to ask to speak to the owner of the business. And if they won't let me speak to them, I say, Hey, you know what? I've got a referral for them. And like, there's nobody that isn't putting you through to the CEO of the business. If you've got an opportunity for them to pursue. So you do have an opportunity for them to pursue. You're going to call 10 recruiters and you know, say, Hey, like I've just spoke with company. No, we don't offer this service, blah, blah, blah. If you already have a recruiter in your uh, in your database, obviously, like that's the first person you want to call. The people that you've been trying to reach that won't take your call. Now you have an opportunity to go back in there and say, hey, I've got this opportunity. Now I thought of you guys, right? So then you, you present them with the opportunity. You give them the contact information. You make a, an introduction. And uh, that's when you ask them again for their support, right? So you've called the recruiting company and you've given the CEO the, the lead. Like, hey, you know what? I'm an IT support company and we work with companies between 20 and 50 computers. Now we do this, this and this. Uh, our, comp our, our best customers look like this. Now, how often do you speak to companies like that? And they're like, oh, well, once in a while. Like, great. I'd love to create a referral relationship. People ask me for these all the time. Now, I'd love to have a company that I can rely on for it. And so you have that conversation. You both agree that you're going to start exchanging referrals where possible. And you're like, hey, who's doing your IT support right now? Right. Like very casual, very simple. No, you're you're everybody's buddy. You just gave them a good lead. You know, there's an opportunity there. And now you're going to ask for their business, too, or you're going to ask for referrals on the call. So there's lots of opportunities to look for referrals while you're calling. But you have to be strategic about it. You can't just like barrel on through saying like, hey, OK, you're good. But uh, what about your friends? <laughs> Does that answer your question? All right, so this is good. I gotta mark this. This is a interested follow up. 
Mm -hmm. And I have to set a task. So just for everybody following along, one, two, three, four, five, six. So we've called this company eight times in um, since 2019. We may have called them more than that because we only have the we have a previous note in there from 2019, but I only have the interactions that started in uh, 2021 here. So no, it took us two years and nine conversations just to get to the point where they're ready to talk about potentially. Um, so somebody just asked, how do you get such great data in your call list? We've been calling the same list for three years. And so you ask that. Uh, the first thing I ask on any, and if you've been following along, the first thing I'm always going to ask to anybody that picks up the phone is how many computers they have. So whether they're interested or not interested, right, I already know how many computers they have because the gatekeeper told us. So from there, like we manage all of that, right? Like one of the things that we um, pride ourselves on at Managed Sales Pros is just creating databases that are filled with data. And like if you don't know where your opportunities are, if you don't know, you know which ones to pursue aggressively and which ones you shouldn't, uh, it's not nearly as helpful. And our clients pay a significant amount to have this information. So we ask as often as possible and we try and learn something new on every call. So one of the reasons we got so much data is that we always ask those questions. You can get really like our callers can get lazy too. I can get lazy too. Yeah, just great database maintenance and a good CRM. The original list we buy off of uh, Dun & Bradstreet or sometimes we buy them off of um, Sales Genie. They're all garbage. No, we, we buy them. We buy the lists. Um, sometimes we get lists. So we create uh, like a strategic marketing approach for our managed services clients now. When we first started the business, we were just like, all right, we'll buy the list and we'll start calling. Now we like to tie in things like webinars and newsletters. Like we like to have a reason to have conversations with people. So in this case, right, like now we've got this, this one law firm that we know is open to a bid. So we're going to get all, we're going to create a webinar specifically to win this law firm, right? It's not like, it's going to be a generic, you know, what law, like blah, blah, law firms and the cloud, right? We know that all of their line of business applications are primarily cloud-based, right? She listed all of them for me. We know what the practice software is. We know all of these things. So this will be a multi-purpose webinar, but we're specifically gonna create it and invite this company to it, right? We're gonna invite this company and every other law firm we have in our database. But what we're trying to do is create another piece, uh, another reason for this company to interact with us. So we'll set up the webinar, We'll build the, like the slides are just going to be a template that we've used previously. Um, and we'll switch out, you know, like why your law firm, like why your accounting firm should move to the cloud. We're going to switch out, switch it out as why your law firm should move to the cloud and blah, 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 Doberman. Right. So it'll be uh, it won't be a huge um, time suck for me because we already have the template built. I'll schedule the webinar. I'll send out the initial invitations. And then when people register for the webinar, I'll engage with the people that registered. And then after the webinar, I'll call everybody that attended the webinar. And so you start building your list that way as well. You can force the uh, registration fields. So when you registered for my webinar today, uh, there was a couple of questions you had to answer in order to register, right? Are you considering outsourcing your sales development in the next 12 months? Are you considering hiring an in-house sales rep in the next 12 months? Now, how many endpoints do you manage? Blah, blah. Sometimes they, I get pretty uh, aggressive in the questions that I want. And the better my content, like for something like this, if people want to come watch me make phone calls, they're going to share data with me. Otherwise, to hell with y'all, right? Like if you're not gonna give me something of value, I'm not gonna give you something of value. So I can put together kind of a crappy uh, webinar about call, cold calling 101, but if people don't wanna provide information, they're not gonna go to a generic cold calling webinar and you know sell their souls to do so. But if they really want to see how we cold call, they'll probably give us a little more information than they would before. So in this case, the more compelling we can make the content, the better. But I'm not going to spend hours and hours and hours to create a webinar for one person. All I want here is a touch point for that person. So I want them to register. Maybe they will, maybe they won't. But knowing what software they use, I can make this webinar super compelling for that person. And I only have to switch out one slide to do it. Right. So. 
I can kind of like lure this client into the fold a little bit better, even though I can't get them a one on one sales appointment right now. You know, I'm going to suggest that we do a, a prospecting um, webinar focused on law firms. And hopefully we get them in and we get four or five other ones in and out of the four or five that show up, a couple of them will take a one on one appointment. And hopefully this client sees what they need to see to make the decision that they want to ask us to bid. So you know, cold calling is just kind of the jumping off point. You do, it's not the only thing that you do. Cold calling by itself works just fine. Um, I haven't, I've done webinars and, and blogs and whatever for like seven, eight years, but I haven't spent any marketing dollars outside of what I'm doing myself for a really long time. Like the pandemic hit, I haven't sponsored a trade show. I'm not doing any online uh, events. I'm not doing any of that. So just to like give you an idea of what kind of like the amount of money that frees up for me, ConnectWise's uh, IT Nation event alone, that's $50,000 for me to just walk on the floor, right? And probably see the exact same MSPs that I saw at IT Nation three years ago, and then the year before that as well. So, you know, when the pandemic hit, my marketing budget was freed up significantly, and we just kept calling, right? So cold calling generates a lot of business for us. Uh, you know, we're a cold calling company. We eat our own dog food. I have my own appointment setter. She gets me about two leads a, a day. Uh, she works full time for me. And, you know, that's that's all she does all day. I offered her a sales promotion this year. She turned it down. She likes appointment setting, which I think is super cool. And I understand because I prefer this part of the sales process to all the other parts. I don't want to take people to lunch. I don't want to get all tied up and stuff. Like, I just want to find like I have a pure hunter. I want to find the opportunity. I want to lure them into the trap and I want someone else to handle it from there. And I can do this all day long. Like it's, uh, it can get, again, it gets super boring when you're having a shitty day, but today's gone pretty well. I've got two very decent opportunities in the pipeline now. And somebody just asked, do I think the math on going to conferences has changed post pandemic? No, the, uh, the virtual sponsorships for IT Nation were just as high. I was like, I'm not going to pay $50,000 to be on a glorified Zoom meeting. Thank you, guys. But, you know, it's it works for other companies. But if you look at our service versus a service that you can demonstrate online, like right now, I'm, I'm doing my best to demonstrate what we do online. But it's really hard to do that unless I'm going to stage the calls. And, and that wasn't really my my desire. I want people to see how much work it takes just to get to the point where you get like one, um, you know, one decent opportunity. I might dial for four hours before I talk to anyone. So you just got to keep focused on it. And most of the time when people are failing at cold calling, it's because they aren't really cold calling. Right. Like right now, I just spent like 11 minutes talking to you guys instead of making phone calls. Right, that's three calls that I didn't make, and you know, three opportunities I don't have now. So there's lots of ways to work without working, especially if you hate making calls. With that being said, let's get back to calling. All right, what is this company? Okay, so these guys looks like they're in a managed contract. They have 12 computers. That's a little small. Call them anyway, just you know, because they're here. Hi, Sherry. It's Carrie calling from Doberman Technologies. Uh, could you tell me who I should talk to to provide a quote for IT support? Um, we right now have a company that handles all our IT. Or yeah, we have a IT for us. Oh, great. How long have you been working with them? Um, like a few, like two, or a few, like ten? Um, Oh, very good. When was the last time that you had a, a competitive quote or an independent third party come take a look at your network? All right. Okay.
And what is Rob's role there? Very good. Is he uh, easy to reach? Okay. I will, uh, may I tell him that we spoke today? Sure. Wonderful. All right. Well, thank you for your help. And uh, I will look forward to uh, chatting with you again. All right. Bye-bye. So these guys have had the same provider for over seven years, which is as long as uh, Sherry has been there. Uh, so she doesn't know how long they've been there because they've just always been there as far as she's concerned. Uh, and they haven't had any significant issues that she can identify. Uh, she gave me the president's email address. So we will begin the process over again trying to reach Rob because he's obviously the decision maker. Um, but I'm not going to email him right now. So i got to flag that for a follow up. It looks like we did that in November of 2020 as well, but we sent the email to somebody else. So getting a new contact kind of resets the clock and we start all over again from the beating. We'll go in and we'll pretend we don't know anything when we talk to Rob. We won't say, hey, we already know we, that you have 12 computers. We already know that you do that. We already know that you have a managed contract. We're just kind of going to go in and let you like, hmm. Tell us about your IT environment. Who's next? Okay, this company has 43 employees. The last time we called them, we got a gatekeeper block. 43 employees, but it looks like they have 12 desktops and they're in a managed contract. Yeah, I would have disqualified this one. So, pass. All right, this is a funeral home. They have 15 computers. They're in a managed contract. Their contract renewal date we actually knew. Hmm. Oh, no, we already talked to them. So we have a six month follow up scheduled for this one already. Kensington Ophthalmology. So 10 employees pass. So this is a medical practice. They have 20 desktops. Oh, we know they're okay. So what, what went on here? So as you can tell from the, the last one where they were perfectly fine with their IT provider the first time we spoke to them, eventually they're not, right? Eventually they feel like they're not getting the support that they had originally. And this happens a lot as managed service providers scale, right? When you're a small provider, you're a single guy, you're pretty aggressive, your pricing is pretty aggressive and you know, you're know you a hundred percent like all over all your clients. And then as your business grows and changes and scales, Right. You don't really want to work with those legacy clients that you undercharged at the beginning because you really wanted the business in. So it sounds to me like this company that we spoke to previously. You now there's some growing pains there. So you can't really prejudge no matter what they said about their provider. Right. Like they loved their provider a year ago. There's still an opera. There's still a chance that something happened in the last year. So the last time we called these guys was in November of 20 and the IT guy was coming in that day. So Oh, thanks for coming, Nate. It's nice to see you again. Office manager. All right, so let's give him a call. Mm -hmm. 
If y'all are bored, don't feel like you have to stick around. I have to do this. Hi, Abby. It's Carrie calling from Doberman Technologies. I'm looking for Jeannie. Thank you. Hi, Jeannie. It's Carrie from Doberman Technologies. I was calling to follow up from a conversation you had with Matt last year about uh, providing a quote for IT support. Looks like you were working with another managed IT company. I wondered if it might be time to have a conversation with a, a new provider. Oh, uh, yeah, no, <laughs> it's pretty hard to fire your kids. <laughs> Although I, I have done that. One of my kids is a, she's actually pretty crafty. She's a crafty person, so. Uh, I appreciate your time. Uh, it sounds like you guys are set, and uh, I appreciate it. Take care. All right. Bye-bye. And that is a fact. I did fire my child. Not because she was bad at cold calling. She was just too smart for her own good. She figured out that uh, if she called really, really fast, she hit her call counts, and nobody, like, bothered her. But So she was only working, like, two hours, but she's getting paid for five. So I don't, uh, I actually think she was pretty clever to figure that out, but couldn't lead, like we got to lead by example, right? She's not, uh, she's not following process. Got to let her go. Um, now she works for another MSP and she's killing it. So, you know, do I regret firing her a little bit, but you know, your kids have to learn too. So their, uh, their IT provider is related to them. They're, we're not going to win this business. And the fact that we didn't find that out, uh, you know, Two years ago, the first time we called in and found out who they were working with is weird. Like the fact that they didn't disclose that. So maybe either somebody wasn't paying attention or they just didn't reveal that part or maybe they're just sick of hearing from us. So this is disqualified by an embedded provider. The odds on displacing um, like a friend of the family or a, a relative or anything are so, so slim that I never even bat, like, bother going to bat over those things. Right. Like, like, yeah, you could start pointing out what happens when your company grows and you've got like the guy next door who fixed your IT for a case of beer for a while, uh, you know, and they haven't changed anything. Their certifications haven't improved. There's lots of ways that you could try to pitch against that. But at the end of the day, somebody going and firing their brother in law or their, you know, dad's best friend from college or whatever, like it's, you want to take your highest percentage chances in cold calling and that's definitely not it. So this call is this lead is disposition is a long-term nurture. It's a healthcare provider. They're in a managed contract. They have 35 computers. Yeah, so this one's not due for a follow-up yet because we recently engaged with them. I'm going to sort by disposition and get out of these. What else have we got today? Soho is pretty cool because it has an either or search methodology. So if I want to find specific opportunities, like find me companies where the disposition is long term nurture and they have more than 30 computers, I can do that. Uh, I can also search for things like show me all the law firms that have more than 10 users where we know their provider. So that it's really helpful if you want to do more targeted calling. I'm trying to do kind of generic calling today, so I'm not uh, I'm not sorting the data in any meaningful way. I'm just kind of doing luck of the draw dialing. So this uh, this company has oh all right. So this company has 43 computers. They have some provider pain points. Last time we talked to them.
And it looks like the last caller just dropped the ball on this one. But this is a this company is a client of the company that's went through a big merger here. They were unhappy two months ago. I'm gonna be pissed if we lost this just because somebody didn't follow up in time. Feeling lucky. Hey, Sean, it's Carrie Simpson calling from Doberman. How are you? Good, thanks. Uh, I was calling to follow up from a conversation that you had with Matt about getting a quote for IT support. Yeah, I know they just went through a, uh, a pretty big merger as well. Mm -hmm. Does that like what does that look like? Like, is it they're not responding in time or they're not responding correctly? Oh, well, thank you. We uh, we appreciate being asked. Um, do you mind if I ask you a couple of questions? I will say this. We have some range for what we're talking right now. Mm-hmm. Do you know what you're using for backup? Two or three-year contract or something like that. Okay. The other stuff is not under contract. Okay. 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 Okay
Okay. Uh, uh, S Hall at. So, yep. That's what we have here. All right. I'll send that invitation out. Um, you'll be meeting with Ian Richardson, who is our CEO. He may have a couple of questions before the meeting. Um, he'll forward those via email if so. Uh, you were pretty thorough when you spoke with Matt. So we've got a, a pretty good understanding of the, the yeah. services that you're using. Yeah, that would be helpful. Well, we could also help kind of step up uh, if that becomes a concern. Like yeah. getting good support is important. Um, I mean, money's important too. But there's usually there's usually clauses in the contract that will allow you to to leave them yeah. for a service delivery issue, right? We don't want anyone, yeah. Very good. Um, if you have any questions for Ian, you just respond to his email as well, and uh, we will look forward to meeting you next week. Thank you. We appreciate the opportunity to earn your business. All right. Thanks, Sean. Have a great day. All right. Bye bye. And that's how it's done, people. Whew. All right. So that's a uh, that's a great opportunity. They were already unhappy. They just went the the company that they work with just went through a merger. Um, you know, they've got sixty employees. He's not sure how many workstations there are, but he thinks there's around forty. And uh, yeah, I'm pretty pleased with that one. So I'm going to get that. Uh, yeah, that's right. It is time for coffee. I am going to do that. All right. It's 3.30. I'm going to go get a cup of coffee and uh, I'll be right back here in a minute. You guys, if you're, uh, if you're having a good time following along, you know, I invite you to stay. If it's getting a little boring, well, we just saw what we came here for. So, you know, don't feel obligated to stick around if you're uh, already at the point where watching calling is getting boring. <laughs> But uh, that was the most exciting part of my day. Um, I don't know. I've been doing this for a really long time, and I still get super excited when I get a win. What day is next Tuesday? I would have been so pissed if we'd missed that meeting because the the previous caller had spoken with them in March. He wanted to follow up in a month. Nobody made that follow up. So now it's April. We could have easily been scooped on this opportunity by any other IT company calling in to see if they are, um, you know, to see if they were happy with their current provider. Same as we are today, right? Like same as other people are calling our clients happens all the time. So if you're skipping over follow-ups, you're like, eh, I just don't feel like doing that today, right? Like we could absolutely have lost a fantastic opportunity. Like I know what we charge for a, an engagement of this size. So this is a pretty sweet deal and missing it over something as stupid as not making a follow-up call as scheduled would have been tragic. The devil is in the details and calling is just like a huge example of that. Somebody had asked where we get their, uh, the information on the endpoints. Um, the endpoint, like we just ask, right? So we've been calling for this client uh, for almost three years now. So there's not a lot of new opportunities coming into their market, right? They're, they live in, or this company is located in small town, Michigan. And, you know, there might be, there might be, 3,000 opportunities total in this market. Um, so, so, you know, how many new companies are starting up every year, and especially through a pandemic year, where you know they're going to have the number of computers that we want to uh, to support, right? Not very many. We, we don't really go after the startups. We're going after established companies that are already working with managed providers, where we can demonstrate that we're going to provide better support. The best uh, opportunities in the market are the ones where they're already engaged with a competitor 
um, that charges about what you charge and does about what you do. You don't have to convince them of the value of managed services. They're already buying it from someone else. They already bought in and they just want it to work. So when it's not working and you can tell this guy's voice, he's frustrated, right? Like they hired these guys and you know, I know what we charge. So I know what they're paying for it. And when you're spending that much on something and it's not working, you know, you get a little cranky. All right, so you guys give me five minutes. I'm going to get a cup of coffee because coffee is for closers. And uh, I'll be right back. And we're back. 30 more minutes. Let's get one more. Adam's like the leader of my fan club now. <laughs> so if, uh, if you guys are enjoying this today and you think it would be of value to uh, the rest of the market, I would absolutely love for you to post about it on LinkedIn. No, mention that it was worth spending some time doing and obviously mention that in, you know, we actually got a meeting today, which is kind of awesome. Uh, uh, also, it doesn't always happen, right? Like we could have called for three hours today, spoken to nobody, learned nothing and got nothing. Right? Part of the challenge with uh, with cold calling 
over other marketing methodologies is it takes real people. Like you have to have somebody calling all the time uh, and you can't really automate much more than the, the follow-up cadences, right? Like you need a real person making the phone calls, which makes it like significantly more expensive than say a digital marketing campaign where you, know, you have a, a very expensive asset creating the campaign and a bunch of lower uh, cost assets creating the, the assets that you're gonna use for the campaign. And then you just automate all the sends, right? So that doesn't require a lot of human intervention, but cold calling is 100% human intervention. It's always gonna be more expensive. And in my opinion, like once you get going, Cold calling is wildly effective, but the first six months is just like slogging through garbage constantly. Like it feels like you're just pushing a rock uphill constantly. So then you get to this point where you've been doing it a while and you know, three hours in, we've got two really good leads and one sales appointment. That's a pretty fabulous day, but not a typical day. Like I have dialed for eight hours and had no, like, nobody's even hung up on me today. So uh, maybe, <laughs> maybe the next one's the, the one that's gonna hang up on me. Nobody's been rude to me today. Super exciting. And I have to text my, my, my kid who works for an MSP. Because every time we uh, get a meeting, we text each other. All right. Ugh, another dentist. <laughs> I don't know about you guys, but uh, do your, um, do the people that you're calling in the medical industry all have Gmail accounts instead of proper accounts? Is that a common thing or is that just a Michigan thing? Because one of the things that like baffles me around about you know, large healthcare providers here is everybody seems to use their own personal Gmail accounts to interact with vendors and just find it weird. All right, so this is a financial services company. They have 12 employees, oh, 20 desktops, so. <laughs> I already have IT support. Mm. Oh, this girl sounds like a sweetheart. This is probably the one that's going to hang up on me. Let's find out. I'm feeling bold now because I got a meeting so I can call the people that normally hang up on us and try and charm my way through it. So they've got a voicemail saying they're experiencing longer than usual hold times. So I'm not gonna wait on hold to talk to someone who uh, hung up on us last time we called them. Save this for another day. Let's see. What's a dental spa? Let's check. <laughs> that guy looks like Cory Booker. Hmm. All right, well, let's give him a call. Okay, so these guys have 12 computers. They're in a managed contract. Um, so these guys are in a contract. They had just signed a new contract in 2020 and it doesn't expire until late 2021. So in this case, I'm not gonna call this lead. Uh, I'm gonna call them later in the year. 
And again, I'm just kind of doing luck of the dial calling here. So I'm not really targeting based on anything specific other than just going through the, the lead list. So the last time we talked to some, this company was in March of 2021. Um, in December of 2020, we found out that they had 30 computers. So we're going to give these guys a call. Uh, I can't tell what they are by the company and the industry isn't listed. So I'm going to go visit their website just to, ah, okay. So they're a, a civil engineering and land surveying firm with 30 computers. So give them a call. Hi, Ken. It's Carrie Simpson calling from Doberman Technologies. We're an IT support firm in Lansing, Michigan. My phone number is 517-978-8324. And I was calling to find out if we might be able to provide a quote for IT support there this year. Again, my name is Carrie. My number is 517-978-8324. And our website is doberman.net. Thanks so much. Have a great day. <laughs> So when I, like they've already been qualified, so we know that they're big enough. Um, and in this case, I'll call this company fairly regularly until I actually physically get to speak to Ken, but I'll continue to leave him a message every like four or five days. And uh, if we had his contact information, which I don't think we do, yeah, we don't have his email address yet. So the next time I call in, I'm going to talk to somebody at the, I'll, I'll dial zero and I'll ask for Ken's email address so that I can send him information if I don't reach him. But the more times he hears Doberman Technologies, Doberman Technologies, Doberman Technologies, like the better, because eventually he's going to like, he'll pick up the phone. And I'll say, Hey, it's Carrie from Doberman Technologies. He'll be like, Oh yeah, you. So. Like to specify in my follow-up activity um, subjects whether it is the like whether we've spoken to the decision maker before or not so if i'm quickly looking at things and this is especially true in connectwise connectwise is a bear to prospect in you want to clearly indicate what the call is about but you want to do it quickly enough that you're not typing a billion things in so usually just using something standard like intro call or follow-up call right so an intro call for me is somebody where we're, it's a follow-up call, but it's with somebody that we haven't spoken to. So I can't really reference the last conversation we had. We haven't talked before. Whereas with the follow-up call, I'm always going to reference somebody having spoken to them previously, whether that was me or another person. And I want to give the impression that, you know, we've got a, a, a relationship already, right? We, we, we're in this together. All right. This is an optometrist office, 20 desktops. And the last time we left them a message was April 1st. And judge from the notes, uh, the doctor that makes the buying decisions doesn't work on Thursdays. Today is Thursday, so I'm going to schedule this call for tomorrow and call the, the actual doctor versus the um, office manager tomorrow. I 
I much prefer working with a headset. Uh, like by the end of today, my uh, my neck's going to be sore. My shoulder's going to be sore. If you're going to call all day, your environment gets to become pretty important. And the more comfortable you can make yourself, the the better your day will go. Right? Calling on a cell phone takes forever. Like I'd rather just click a button, have the conversation. I like my hands free so that I can type. One of the things that I have to aggressively train out of people is uh, taking notes in a piece of paper on a piece of paper and then transferring them to the CRM afterwards. Like if you were only going to call for two hours a day, you need all of those hours to call and taking notes by hand and then transferring them into something else. It's a huge waste of time. So get yourself a headset, get good at typing. My, uh, my mother made me take typing classes in high school. She said that uh, I could always get a job as a receptionist that way. So I feel like I would have been a terrible receptionist. But the typing did come in handy. My uh, my mom types 110 words a minute. I can type about 60, um, and I can type about 40 accurately. <laughs> when my mom's typing, it sounds like a uh, rifle range. So this is an animal hospital. 10 users, they're in a managed contract and we're not calling uh, 10 seat veterinarians. So I'm gonna move on from that. 12 users in a break fix contract. Yeah, so 12 users and hung up on us last time we called. I'm not doing that today. Chiropractor, 18 desktops, 11 users, one server. Uh, no, that's a duplicate. Orthopedic surgeon, 30 users, managed contract. All right, so in March, we spoke to a gatekeeper who gave us the computer count and the name of the new office manager. So at that time, I doubt that the office manager just walked in the office and thought, oh, I'm going to get a new IT provider. So maybe they like the person they're working with. Maybe they won't. But somebody changing jobs is a really good time to try and displace the IT provider, right? So they don't have the relationship that the previous company would have had. They're not the ones who hired them, so they're not invested in the outcome of it. Could have just pressed zero there. Uh, Vanessa Vaughn, please. It's Carrie Simpson from Doberman Technologies.
Hi, Vanessa. My name is Carrie Simpson. I'm calling from Doberman Technologies in Lansing. My number is 517-978-8324. And I was calling to find out if we might be able to provide you with a quote for IT support this year. Again, my name is Carrie. I'm calling from Doberman. Our website is doberman.net. And my number is 517-978-8324. Thanks so much. Have a good day. All right. I think we got time for one more call. One of the other things I like about Zoho is it will save information by date last modified. So if I forget to disposition, disposition a call, like today I've been kind of sloppy with my uh, dispositioning because it's kind of clunky and I wanted to get through more calls. So I'll, I'll sort by the, um, the date of last contact or the date of last modification and it'll show like Zoho shows me who modified. So I can like everything that was modified by Carrie Simpson on the 6th of May, uh, it'll pop up every call I made today, and then I can go back and kind of clean up the the mess that I made. So I don't oh I don't want a caller coming in behind me and seeing that uh, you know I didn't do what I'm telling them to do all the time. So one of the things that's super important if you're kind of planning your transition from a business owner that's making their own calls to bringing in a sales rep is to always. Um, demonstrate the practice that you want followed, right? You can't really do a do as I say and not as I do with your sales reps because they will, uh, much like my daughter, eat you alive on that, right? You've got to demonstrate the exact behaviors that you want. You have to make data integrity. Like if you want to find out all these, like you want to make sure that your database looks like our database, it means that you've got to incentivize your caller to ask the question on every call. So every call that our team makes should sound almost identical to the previous calls. And then you start incentivizing the behavior that you want. So now if we want more data in the database, then we don't incentivize on meetings scheduled. We incentivize on data point collection. And then part of the challenge around that is if people are getting bonused out on something, they can try and game the system. So they could just start making it up, for example. And if you've got a team of 30 callers, I guarantee you that a handful of them at any given time are falsifying documentation and you have to know how to look for it. And that's one of our biggest challenges. It's just like now that we've all pivoted to remote, quality control in a call center becomes a little more challenging when you can't just walk up and down the aisles listening to people. So we had to significantly raise our um, quality control profile to make sure that people weren't just inventing stuff. And then you come up with counterbalances as well. So if you bonused out on meetings only, the meetings that you got might be kind of like tire kicky look -see meetings. Uh, so you have to also bonus out on a no-show rate. So our callers have to keep their no-show rate under 20%. They have to keep their time in between dials under two minutes. Uh, they are incentivized for every data point that they can collect. So the reason we have all these uh, endpoint counts in our um, system is that our callers get paid every time they find data. But the converse of that is if we find out that they aren't uh, recording things accurately or they're not doing their jobs correctly, right? Like the we've got kind of a three strikes in your out sort of company, right? Like we'll counsel you once, we'll counsel you twice, and then we'll fire you for falsifying documentation. And that's because it's tied to um, incentive. So anytime you want to incentivize a behavior, you find the behavior you want to incentivize, and then you find the counter incentive so that you can create something that can't be gamed essentially. So if you're a traction company, if you're thinking about your scorecard for your new caller or your new sales rep, you wanna figure out what are the things that the sales rep is doing that you want to fix, right? So for us, uh, most of that was time card errors, if you can believe that. People really, really struggled for some reason clocking in and out for breaks on time. So um, not only were their breaks creeping, uh, but people were, would just forget to clock out at the end of the day which is a huge pain in the ass. Uh, the, you know, we had 30 people whose time cards needed to be adjusted every two weeks. So uh, somebody just asked how we spiff the reps and we're at the top of the hour. So, you know, I'll make one more call just so like that's what I'd want from my team. So that's what I'm going to do. And then I can answer those questions. Hate to leave a minute before the miracle happens. Thank you for 
Uh, it's Carrie calling from Doberman Technologies. I'm looking for Barbara Walker, please. Thank you. Barbara, it's Carrie Simpson calling from Doberman Technologies. How are you? I'm calling to follow up from a conversation you had with Matt uh, back at the beginning of the year about IT support. I'm sorry, Matt's no longer with us, so I'm just kind of picking up where he left off. Uh, the note mentioned that you'd like a call back later in the year. Oh. Uh, well, I understand that we have uh, we have a couple of those relationships ourselves. Um, if anything should change, our website uh, is another dog name. So <laughs> our company name is Doberman. So <laughs> yeah, I know. So if you want to, you need a new dog, you can just give us a call. <laughs> All right. Have a good day. Bye bye. So the name of that like our the company name here is uh, Doberman. The company name that they're working with is called Bulldog, uh, but they're also a client of theirs. So uh, as a somebody whose um, house flooded last weekend, we used our dishwasher for the first time and the, like, the dishwasher pretty much exploded, came back from a, a walk and uh, ended up with an involuntary renovation of two floors of our house. Thank you, dishwasher. We've only lived in the house for a week, but we do the IT support for both the demolition company and the insurance company. So we were able to get the, the situation remedied, like within an hour, there was somebody on site with the fans and the cleanup crew. And then, you know, we've already had all the demolition done and now the rebuild will start. So never underestimate the power of a client uh, needing IT support at midnight and providing it. So that's it for calling today. We've got some questions now, so I'm gonna answer them. Um, where are they? So what do we spiff our reps? So we don't give uh, an individual spiff to our reps. Uh, sometimes we have contests during the day uh, to just to make it interesting because, you know, if you're making 15 bucks an hour, uh, a $20 or $100 bonus and you get a little extra work out of everyone every day. Uh, but we work on the traction scorecard. So the way that our, our scorecard works is there's six variables that people get incentivized on. And through those variables, uh, if they are they, there's a price like we call it pay, pay to play or permission to play levels of performance. So you're expected to make 100 calls a day, right? Like that's the bare minimum just to keep your job. Uh, you're expected to schedule one sales appointment a week just to keep your job. Um, again, two minutes in between dials just to keep your job. Uh, one payroll error or less in a week. Um, and so, and you have to be on time and you have to show up for your scheduled shift. So we had to put... Um, attendance and tardiness onto our scorecard because it was a problem for us. And I think it's a problem for all call centers and we have to aggressively overstaff our call center in order to meet our client obligations because people just don't like to come to work. <laughs> uh, but that's a little bit easier now that we're remote, um, but it's still not perfect. So in order, like you could be a superstar, but if you punch in for work 10 minutes late every day, you will never get a bonus here. You gotta show up on time, whether you're a superstar or a newbie, um, if people are late or absent during even one day of training, uh, we have a two week training period. If you come late to training, don't come to work. You're fired. Right. Like we do not put up with that here and we just didn't want to be your typical churn and burn call center. So our goal is to condition our callers to the point where in two years they will be so wildly employable that they can double their income somewhere else. And we will hand place them at another managed service provider or with another vendor at that time. And we have done that uh, over and over again. It's worked really well for us. So people kind of, when people start telemarketing jobs, they're kind of like, oh, well, I guess I've screwed up my life badly enough that I'm a telemarketer now, fantastic, right? So our goal with that has always been to explain to them where you can go as a telemarketer. So I look at my, my, my kid, for example, who started working for a managed service provider in Canada six months ago. She just negotiated a 100% salary increase and a significantly higher variable plus a bump on everything that closed because she's been performing so well. 
right? So here's this 21 year old kid came in at $15 an hour is now charging 30. Now works when she wants just negotiated the entire summer off. So cold calling is a skill that's pretty valuable and it's hard to find people that like it. It's hard to find people that are going to do it well. So our goal is to really create an environment where callers who may not necessarily have imagined themselves telemarketing for a living, get excited about it. So um, if any of you like Adam, I know you're a traction guy. Um, we have to do, we do our traction speech, like the talking about the, the core values of the business and you know how we started the business and what we do and why it's important, why it should be exciting and what we believe in and what we incentivize people for. We have people who get up and walk out, right? Back when we interviewed in the, uh, in the call center, people would just leave. They'd like get up in the middle and they'd be like, you know, F you guys, this is stupid. I'm not doing this. But, uh, you know, our callers went from making 13 bucks an hour to making $55,000 a year in two quarters. So if they're performing well, they're going to have their salaries increase. So the way that our SPIF works, the uh, the percentage above your scorecard percentage that you achieve uh, is aligns with your salary increase. And you get to keep that salary increase for the whole quarter. But the, uh, you know, the, the crux of it is if you don't perform at the same level for the next quarter, your salary drops down to minimum wage or whatever, like the minimum. Uh, I think we hire people at 13 when they come out of training, they get bumped up to 15. And then for every, you know, every 10 percent over plan they are, they get an extra dollar an hour. So it goes up to twenty five dollars an hour. And that's where people top out. And then, you know, after after a year of performing at that level, we will place them somewhere else where they'll get significantly more and commission and and and. So we have a bunch of uh, sales reps that work for um, some a couple of backup vendors. And then we have a couple that work for some managed service providers. It's been a really good way to to get people trained and ready for better jobs. So. Uh, somebody asked if they were a similar sized MSP in the Lansing area, would we use the same list or would we use one provided by the client? We wouldn't use the same list. We purchase a new list for every client when they begin. So we aren't geographically exclusive, but we also don't have an issue with um, like when we were in the call center, we were geographically exclusive because there was no way that we could control, you know, caller one talking to caller two about, you know, their, their clients who essentially compete with each other. Now we don't have that problem because the callers never even meet each other. They might interact a little bit um, on social, but they don't like they don't have email addresses. Right. So they can't email each other. They can interact on teams, but that's it. So they can talk a little bit, but it's not like they're going to post up like, hey, uh, MSP Lansing one just got an appointment. Here's the information. Call them and get an appointment for your client. Right. Like that was our big concern always about how do we how do we essentially um, protect our clients from burning their lead lists. Um, so we just start over. When a client works with us, the data that we collect becomes their intellectual property and it's handed to them at the end of the campaign, you know, organized for them so that they can take that, they can hand it to another vendor and have them make their calls or they could do their calls in house. And they don't, um, you know, they don't have to worry about whether or not somebody else is getting all of their data. How did everybody find the pace today? It was I mean, there's a significant number of people left on the call. Was uh, did you learn what you wanted to? Well, I have uh, about 20 minutes left to answer questions if you have any. And if you don't have any, then, uh, you know, we're done for the day. I'm done for the day. Pretty sure someone's going to buy me dinner for that meeting, so... So we build out an entire 16 month marketing program for you. And the goal of it is to increasingly add stuff onto your plate so that you don't have to become a marketing expert overnight. So we start with a month of consulting to figure out like, Hey, are you even like, is this even a good thing for you? Right? Like I, I think a lot of times people come into an engagement with a marketing firm thinking 
that it's going to be one way and it turns out to not be like that at all. And not every company is going to be a great fit for us. And uh, not every company is going to have the infrastructure necessary to support uh, a sales engine. Right. So if you are a brand new MSP and, it, you know, with a couple of employees and a couple of clients, there's no like you shouldn't be outsourcing your calling. You should be doing it yourself and you should do it yourself till you're about a million and a half. And at that point, you can start considering who you should be working with to support you in the things that you're not an expert at. Or you should start thinking about how you're going to build your in-house process. But my advice to everyone is to think, like, where are you going to be in five years? and build the sales process that you want to have in like for five years from now, when you've actually got a salesperson in place and when you're not doing everything yourself anymore, because the, uh, the work required to rip and replace when you're a $5 million company and you kind of uh, created a kludgy sales process and duct taped everything together, like ripping, replacing, re-educating and change management at that point is a nightmare. So if you build the process that will work for you then, it'll absolutely work for you now. And we do like just a whole series of like, all right, first we're gonna do this, then we're gonna scrub all the data so that we've got those email addresses and those that you'd see how important that was to me today, right? Having all that data is really important. At the end of that three month period, we've got all that information. Then we start telemarketing for real, real. Uh, and we add in a webinar and then we add in a newsletter. We usually go uh, specific topics. So we're usually going to talk about cybersecurity one month, you know, take a month off of webinars. Then we're going to talk about cloud, take a month off of webinars. Then we're going to start getting more vertical specific. So now we're going to talk about uh, cloud for lawyers, cloud for accountants, cloud for construction firms. And then we're going to do cloud uh, cybersecurity for lawyers and cyber like so whatever your vertical is, then you start getting vertical specific and you start creating buckets for your marketing so that you're not making the identical call to everybody. So it kind of goes from a great big gen general campaign into more focused buckets. And then we'll take care of like, we're going to do the slides for those webinars. We're going to set up those webinars. So we do all of that for you, um, you know, and you can participate as much or as little as you would like to in the process. I encourage everybody to learn a little bit about outbound calling and about digital marketing and about all of the options that you have available to you and then learn your numbers really well. So before you go and engage with a calling firm like mine or anyone else's, do you already know how much it costs you to sign a client? Adam, do you know how much it costs you to sign one client? You've got to know that. Does everyone on the call know how much it costs them to sign one piece of new business? We don't provide a template for a network assessment, though. Like, that's really beyond my, uh, like, I don't conduct them. I don't, I mean, I've had them myself, but... I'm sure that I could connect you with somebody if you needed a template for that. I know that most people have security assessments that are pretty, um, not proprietary, but they spend a lot of time building them and they probably won't share them, but network assessments are pretty standard. Like I think rapid fire, for example, has a, like a template that you can fill out and just spit out a network assessment. I could be wrong there. So I apologize if that data is incorrect. Uh, most of the clients that we work with have their own process for that and they charge for it. So, they're not going to give away the network assessment, although usually around month 11 of the calling campaign, I want to offer like I want there to be a rich offer that's going to kind of like seduce the people that were kind of on the fence. So, you know, we've been calling for almost a year. We've got a bunch of stuff in the hopper. We want to push them over the edge right around the time where our clients are going to renew with us. Right. So we want the client to offer something really aggressive and valuable so that we can push all of those last um last gas kind of stragglers into the pipeline. Uh, and, you know, obviously the more, the more appointments that we get closer to the end of the engagement, the more likely it is that the MSP is going to renew with us. So we want all that, we want all that high ticket calling for like, I would call it high ticket calling. And we're going to take that rich offer and we're going to reapproach everybody that was qualified, interested, but we couldn't quite get them over, um, over the finish line. And at that point, we can take that information and you know, just go in more aggressively. And like, it's a $2,000 security risk assessment. We're going to offer it to you complimentary. 
you know, blah, blah, blah. You're going to meet with this person. And then this is going to happen. We kind of walk them through what the, what the plan is. And then we try and get them into a meeting with the CEO of the business. But we don't want to offer that to people that are like tire kicky or low value accounts, right? So looking at this one here that I just spoke to, like they're happy with their provider. But if we could go in and do a security assessment and create a laundry list of uh, garbage that they now have to take back to their IT provider and have them remediate, right? Like, okay, here's everything that's wrong with your security posture. Boom, have a nice day, right? Then they hand that to their provider and we just created a complete shit show for that provider, right? They're gonna have to come back and defend why they didn't do this or why they did do this. And they're gonna say, oh, that's not important. You know, and probably it isn't that important, but they don't know that. and we'll point out every flaw that we can find. So at that point, then we start going to look for places where we can position you as a industry expert. So associations, organizations, you know, anywhere where you can provide free content and you can get some exposure and possibly get their list from them because then we can call their list. So if you can partner with somebody in your uh, community that's going after the same business as you, and invite them to the events that you're scheduling now, then you can start calling down on a list that you know is accurate because it's been provided by someone else and they've been using it for their own marketing. The more people you can partner with and the more places you can be presented as an expert, the better because the more times people say your name and I think the, the standard is like, people have to hear your name six times before they remember it. So you know, when they sell advertising campaigns, they sell six of something, right? They're, and you've got it over and over and over again. So that's why I always leave a voicemail. I want them to hear the company name over and over again. I want to send emails with the logo of the company over and over again. I want the, the, to touch them as many times as possible. And then, you know, it's like a couple of years later, you know, I, I can usually get a meeting in about two or three hours of calling, but you know, it might take my team eight hours to get the same results as me. So it's not, you know, it's not a guarantee. And I mean, we, we blank all the time. And we'll go through a week where we don't get a meeting for any of our clients. And that happens to us pretty regularly. Any other questions today before we call it a shift? Uh, when asking for the appointment with the owner, should you refer to them as the owner or the president? So I always go in asking to speak to the person who's responsible for choosing an IT vendor, right? Like I don't want to try and track down the president or the owner. So I mean, as uh, as the owner of my business, there is almost zero way for somebody to contact me. Uh, they the call center knows under threat of death that they are not to put a call through to me ever. Right? I don't care what they want. I don't care if my house is burning down. I don't want calls transferred to me. Anybody that has my cell phone number can call me directly all the time. Anybody else, I don't need to talk to them. I can talk to them on my schedule, not on their schedule. And I love taking cold calls. So I have like when somebody calls into the 1-800 line and they're trying to sell something to me, I take sales calls on Friday afternoons. So if they want to talk to me, they can call me on a Friday afternoon. Um, I'll set it up in Zoom because, again, I don't want them having my call, my number. Uh, but it's very, very difficult to get me on the phone. I found out that my phone number had been put into one of those data platforms and I immediately got rid of my phone and my phone number and I started all over again. So whenever that happens to me, the minute my phone number gets out, I change it. Right? I don't want people bothering me in the middle of the day. I get distracted super easy. And most of the time I'm on the phone. So the um, if you ask for the owner of the business, you're probably talking to the person, like the person who picks up the phone for our company is the person who makes the choices, right? Because they're the ones that are interacting with the solutions that we use every day. I logged into Zoho today. I log into Zoho when I'm calling for Doberman or when I'm calling for myself, and that's probably only a couple of hours a day. So I'm not gonna make the choice about whether or not we change CRMs, right? Like if some, if my team brings an idea to me and they wanna do something, great. If I bring an idea to my team, they're gonna tender it out. And right? so that's something you should think about when you're trying to decide who you wanna pitch. If you pitch, um, if you pitch the office manager and they're the ones who have the, the pain, right? They're the ones that are experiencing all the people bugging them all throughout the day and they, 
They want to change, like they'd like to change IT support providers and they're going to go to the person that owns the business and say, hey, we need to do this. And like, ideally you've provided them with the tools that they need to assess what downtime is costing them, right? So if they are having downtime on a regular basis and their service level is low or their email's breaking all the time, if you can show them how much money they're losing by not being able to access the things that they need to work, they can make a pretty strategic case to the business owner to change providers. But when you present an opportunity to the business owner, the business owner will go to, I mean, most of the time anyway, I'm not sure how you run your business, but I'm not gonna change a tool set without getting my executive team to buy into it. So I've gotta to go to them and say, hey, I'd like to do this. And then they're gonna say, okay, we'll take it from here, right? And then I'm out of the process and they'll come back to me with three people they think I should evaluate as opposed to, you know, my office manager comes to me and says, we're changing to 3CX. All right, how much does it cost? It's the same as what we're paying right now. Okay, let me know how it goes, right? Like really depends on how the decision-making structure is set up, but you don't necessarily need to talk to the owner or the president. You now the, uh, the pre like you're never gonna get a doctor on the phone first try. So if you're calling into the, the healthcare vertical, you're always gonna talk to a practice manager or an office manager. They're gonna get the doctors involved, right? And if they've got a practice with multiple doctors, all of those doctors are gonna have to pay out of pocket for that, uh, for that new whatever it is. So you know, they're going to have to coordinate with eight other people. Do you want to do that work? I, I don't want to do that work. I'm going to just call one person. I'll let them corral all the doctors and then I'll present to the doctors when the office manager feels it's an appropriate time to do so. And then when you're looking at uh, larger opportunities, if you're going after co-managed, you're never going to get the owner of the business on the phone. Right. So if you're going after those bigger, uh, higher ticket, you know, mailbox money type deals, the odds on you getting to the president of a 150 uh, user company, almost impossible. Like you may get there eventually, but you're gonna have to be championed in. So kind of release yourself of the idea that you have to go from the top down. That's old school thinking. You can ship your way up to the top and you wanna talk to the people that are most affected by it. My tolerance for technology pain is extraordinarily high. And if my laptop isn't working, I will throw that laptop on the ground and I will get my phone and I will work for the rest of the day on my phone because I can't be bothered to call for IT support. And Ian probably isn't putting up with my shit that day. So, you know, I will work on my phone and then later on in the day, I will go back and have like, I'll call the support line later, but I don't want to wait on hold. I don't want to have to like have the guys diagnose it. Like, I just don't want to do any of that. I have a spare laptop. I will put up with all kinds of nonsense. So I'm really not the person to ask about our IT infrastructure because I don't, I'm not really affected by it, right? Like I don't work in the call center. So if the call center goes down, I'm not affected by it. You need to talk to someone there who understands what's going on because unless shit's on fire, no one's calling me from the call center, right? Like we would have to be a hundred percent down with no resolution in sight before somebody would bother me about it. Seven minutes till the day is over. Is everyone excited? I think on that, we're probably going to start winding down now. If uh, if you're interested in talking to us further about how we can help or you want to come back again tomorrow, I'm going to be calling again tomorrow at one o'clock for another uh, three and a half hours. And uh, hopefully we can shake the trees a little more aggressively. Thanks everyone for spending some time with me today. I really appreciate it. Uh, we're not sending out recordings of this. If you enjoyed the presentation, um, I would really appreciate it if you bigged it up a little bit on LinkedIn because I'm uh, hoping to draw a little more attention to it. And uh, I'm hoping that we'll get some more uh, managed service providers popping in to see what cold calling looks like. So thank you everybody. Really appreciate your time. Three and a half hours is a lot of time to spend with someone and uh, I'm thirsty. <laughs> I will talk to you uh, again tomorrow if you want to join us again. And uh, my email is carrie at managedsalespros.com if you'd like to connect with me. Thank you so much. And uh, I hope you have a great day. Hope you practice some of the things that you learned today. Uh, do I have a LinkedIn? I absolutely do have a LinkedIn post. Hold on. I will, uh, I will find that and pop it into the window. Good idea.
Oh, well, here's the, um, is that the, uh-oh, did I just lock myself out? No, I'm not, I'm 